but uh, I think we are ready to get started here. Yep, with both players here, it is going to be Ray Ray versus Cosmo to lead off here for the first matchup of Frosty Faustings Online. Thank you so much, guys, for tuning in, and it is about to get started here. Just waiting for the, uh, the stage select. Yeah, so obviously you guys all know what Ray's used to. Magneto, Doom, Sentinel, all in white, of course. A little pink tent on Sentinel, but uh, I haven't seen Cosmo play here before. Um, Wolverine player. Definitely a tough matchup sometimes against Magneto, but using jam session assist can make all the difference. That and uh, being able to dominate the ground with drones. Uh, Ray's assist calls and assist usage uh, in terms of punishing and using his own is probably the best in the business of just about anyone. And drones especially makes it very hard for Wolverine to be able to close that gap. Oh, absolutely. He's going to make Cosmo eat drones every time. All right, so Cosmo just in chip damage and projectiles. Able to already lose Wolverine, no clean hits established. And a throw off of a Mag Blast, but he's not able to convert it. But the Crouch Medium checks his legs right away. And Cosmo is going to lose Dante as well. So Ray's going to go into Akuma coming in. Three meters still available. Absolutely. Ray looks in promising position right now. Cross up, good block, but gets hit by the low. Ray's looking good. X Factor should be it. Yeah, a very easy confirm there on the dash up with the launcher. And Ray Ray, with a perfect, is going to start off. Well, that could be a sign of things to come here, so we'll see. So that'll be one to zero going into the second match here, 99 seconds. Ray immediately gets to establish his space, uses that beam. Swiss cheese on wake up, definitely not what Cosmos is looking for, but that's okay. Jam session gets the hit. Not really to stay able to establish any pressure, though. It's a good sense of where to tech from Ray. Sometimes teching up can just be enough to get away from Wolverine. All right, good dash back there. Throws the Mag Blast. Another throw off the Mag Blast. The second time that situation has come up, clearly on purpose at this point. And he's able to chip him out with the beam. Very nice. Ooh, the lows and the cross up by Ray, but drops it, unfortunately. Yep, that's all right. The beam applies the pressure. Goes into the crouching heavy. And there, the presence of mind to know the beam is there. He has to stop his block string, dash up launcher. Straight into the mix up. Should be an easy finish. Ray Ray is going to make it two to zero now off the gravity squeeze. Do you think, you think Ray was trying to go for a second perfect there? That's what it was looking like. <laughs> he was definitely playing, uh, definitely playing a little more reserved than we would normally see once he's got, uh, once he smells blood in the water, he knows how to flip that switch. So he's just trying to make a statement early for this bracket. Let him know. That was a fake throw there. If you've seen Ray play quite a lot, you know that he's the best in the business at getting close, stopping his plinks, and getting those quick throws. Getting the fake, getting the crouch medium, straight into the infinite. And this is uncommon from Ray. We haven't seen him do go for many infinites on Parsec. He's feeling I, confident here, I suppose. He's going for it, and he succeeded. There we go. Same side with the Mag Blast. And he loses Dante for it. So Ray might need to use another meter on the extension here. No, it's not even going to need to. So now one and a half meters, X-Factor still available. He's going to catch Sentinel here. We're going to see an X-Factor. So with the X-Factor, we're going to have to use that movement to get across. No, but the Mag Blast goes for the double cross-up. Is not able to get there. Ray with the optimal confirm. Has a level three. The back turn, he said oh the no look over the oh shoulder. Ray. And Ray Ray will close it out three to zero with a little over the shoulder. Oh, man. Three to zero. Bro, Ray hit him backwards. <laughs> like to see that a lot. So Ray Ray is going to move on in the winner side. Cosmos going to go down to losers though. Still in it. We'll see what we get for the ma next match coming up. Again, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Frosty Faustings 13. It's been a huge pleasure to have you guys here. Thank you for being patient with us in the beginning. And now we are finally having it rolling. The next match already getting queued up here. We're getting our players connected. Oh. It's going to be a long night of Marvel, and I cannot wait. I love Friday Night Marvel. We all know this. Wow. I really think Ray is just trying to put everyone on notice. You know what I, I so mean? so, too. Uh, Ray, has, Ray has been doing, obviously, very well in the Parsec era, but uh, he's trying to win Frosty Frosting 13, bro. You know what I mean? He's trying to do the damn thing. So, today very might be the day. Yeah, very, very true. <laughs> Chat asking about your uh, Tears of Wall Street. How's that? Uh, how's the taste compared to normal water? Oh, bro, this is actually uh, <laughs> very good water here. It has a lot of electrolytes, so uh, the tears add the electrolytes. 
Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> tastes like GameStop. They said delicious. <laughs> <laughs> the GME, appreciate it. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my goodness. I hope you guys are all doing well, though. This is, uh, like I said, this is just the beginning here. We're going to be finishing the whole bracket out tonight, so. Yeah, I was going to say, definitely a one-night bracket here. Yeah, it's a lot of a lot of matches to go through here. But like I said, we're going to finish it out, no problem for sure. Thank you guys, by the way, for the incredible support you guys have been giving us. Appreciate all you guys. I see you out here. Is that Talu? I see you. I can't say the rest of it. I'm going to say that's, I'm going to consider that as front of house. <laughs> Talu front of house. That's what you meant to say, right? Top eight today, too. T absolutely top eight tonight. Yes, sir. Yeah, we have an amazing team here that runs the tournaments, runs all the setups. So, uh, like I said, this is going to be a breeze. So we're going to, you know, we're going to get right through it. So no worries. Oh, all man. Right. So, so do we have our next two players connected here? It looks like they're uh, both getting in. Yeah, so we have Flocker going up against Bluebeard here next. So uh, we're just waiting on uh, Flocker to connect. All right. Flocker, another one of those players who has been uh, obviously well, very well established in the Marvel community, in the Marvel world, in the grand scheme of things. In the Parsec era, has been recently coming up, has been uh, starting to finally play back to his normal potential. We all know that he's capable of beating anyone, but finally starting to uh, get some reps in on Parsec, start to uh, feel more like himself, and now he's looking as good as he ever has. Yeah. That neutral's getting good. You will call him Evo Champ Flocker. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Yeah, did he? The Flocker won a tournament before, right? That's, I think he's won at least one. He did. He won a TNS at one point. Did he? <laughs> I don't think he. Won, oh, he won an off my end. Yeah. I think, that, I think that was like an important tournament that he had won at one time many years ago. I can't remember. Oh, Triple it, Doom. Oh yeah, he did win Triple Doom. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <Very> <laughs> yeah, it's important. gonna be, it's gonna be a pleasure to see Flocker. Definitely one of the most patient players playing a um, a cool team, I would say, as far as uh, zero teams go. You know, they're a little tongue in cheek, but. I mean, that's I feel like that's a fair zero team. It's, you know, you got Hawkeye then. Yeah, big finger quotes. <laughs> big finger quotes on the fair. I respect that, though. All right, so we're going to have him get himself reconnected here. He's having a little bit of control issues, but he will be okay. Still getting everyone connected here via Parsec. When it comes to uh, Parsec connecting, sometimes it can be... Uh, a little finicky at times, but for the most part, it's we've gotten it figured out to the point where everything is very, very clean and simple. So get a little reset here, and now everything will be fine. It's crazy how far Parsec's come with Marvel and all the online capabilities it has. It's amazing. Yeah, it's just an amazing program that's just oh, worked out perfectly, honestly. All right, so here we go. Both players connected. Both players able to move. Yeah, we will be enabling the yes. uh, the betting on the channel points tonight, guys. So yeah, definitely, <laughs> uh, definitely have fun with that. Yeah, I was gonna say the betting thing is definitely, uh, definitely very, very fun. So it looks like so far, definitely in favor of Flocker. Y'all got some, y'all got some confidence. I respect that. Yeah. So basically, I mean, we all know who Flocker is. This is my first time seeing Bluebeard play, so I'm kind yes. of excited to see what they have. So, oh, looks like they're gonna play. This is a very interesting team selection here. I'm not sure. Uh, oh. Oh, he random. Okay, I was gonna say. This is a button check then. <laughs> I was I was about to say that's that's kind of wild. Yeah, I was <laughs> I was super ready. <laughs> You're like, okay. He said reverse Marvello. <laughs> All right. So getting that button check through. So I'm just gonna be. I think the most interesting thing to me is gonna be seeing how Flocker. Uh, I guess I know that Flocker watches these matches when he's not playing. So I know that he saw Ray play. Uh, are we going to try and see a statement from a Flocker of his own? Is he going to try and uh, do something? Or is Bluebeard just going to be able to hold it down? Again, this is, a, at least for me, my first time watching him play. So we'll have to see. You just never know when you've yeah. got someone you've never seen play before and you know the capabilities of Flocker. You know? And it's also a little bit of Parsec, so it might be a little different. So I'm excited to watch. He's playing uh, Team Marvello as well, too. Yeah. And uh, so Flocker knows that matchup for sure. Maybe his most practice matchup of yes. all. <laughs> we'll have to see, though, if he's going to uh, leave Strider on point or if we're going to hold a button to get Nova in front. I think uh, both team compositions are fine. Traditionally, Nova front is certainly the uh, the more accepted variant, but we'll have to see. And he is going to start Strider. Okay. Reverse Marvello? 
Yeah, very interesting choice here. We'll see if it pays off though. Oh, it's not looking good to start here. He's already lost half his health before the combo started. I was gonna say, yeah, the early rapid slash with a very easy confirm afterwards. Flocker taking it to the corner. This is gonna be very telling for the day. Flocker completes loop one. So that's a very good look. We're in there. It's the cross up, it doesn't confirm. All right, Lightning's not quite able to get there. Bluebeard is able to reestablish himself a little bit here. So now it's going to be more about trying to get Nova in, if we can. He's had a couple opportunities there. Two whiffed push blocks on the crouch heavy. And Flocker is going to open it straight back up. It's going to be all down to Nova. Nova, a little more untraditional of an anchor, but more than capable. Oh, but the problem is there's no hard drive here. You have to be able to touch the ground to get access to those Nova shenanigans. Yeah, or at least pay X Factor to at least try to see the block before anything happens. And we're just going to see if Flocker can finish this up with the loops. And a neat and tidy first game here from Flocker. Looking good. Up 1 0 now. Let's see what we get going into the second match here. Coming forward, Bluebeard. Goes for the throw at the beginning, but the jump pizza cutter from Flocker, and he covers it perfectly with the assist, just knowing that if the assist is able to hit, uh, he gets a free confirm off the pizza cutter. If he gets blocked, he gets a, an immediate mix-up when he lands onto the ground. It's a great option coverage. Yeah, Flocker has a contingency plan for a lot of things. Go with the mix-up. Big time cross-up, and he blocks the double cross-up this time, so Bluebeard with the defense. It manages to get away, just wake up launcher, and it actually almost works, but Flocker just a hair out of range. Good spacing on his ink, uh, on his, uh, his wake up options there. All right, let's see if he has it. He also, uh, gets another chance at the loop right here. Yep, he's gonna kill it with one. It's gonna be all down to Nova once again, potentially an X Factor early. No, he's not gonna have the opportunity again, just straight into a meaty from Flocker. There's the X. That's what I was waiting for, but he did the wrong super. Yeah, it gets crossed up for the Rocket Punch. Rapid Clash does not quite confirm it. So now we have to time our pushbox well. We're going to get unblockable. Yeah, that situation is just once you block the standing heavy with Sogenmu, if he has an assist behind him, that's a true unblockable situation. He might get out of there. Stinger's not able to finish. Empty, teleport, low. Flocker is going to make it 2-0 to zero now. Again. Looking very clean the whole way through. All right, looks like Bluebeard's going to take a second, just kind of you know, regather his thoughts. And I think that's the right choice for sure. Sometimes you just need a moment to recollect yourself. Orange Buster gets him into the corner, misses the standing heavy, but again, the same frame trap. Bluebeard has been caught in that situation where he has gotten caught trying to push block and whiffing that crouching H three times in the last two games. Blocker just masterfully baiting that out, knowing uh, knowing how long he needs to wait to get those uh, those busters to not be a true block string. He's gonna go straight into loops. Three meters spent now. Right, let's see if you got this. Is the longest one yet? Yeah, and it's gonna be all up to Nova now. We're gonna probably see a meaty once again. Same situation as before. And this time the cross up afterwards. Honestly though, Flocker hitting that loop earlier is very good sign for him later today. So, I mean, obviously, you know, loops can be a little bit more difficult on Parsec sometimes. But sometimes you have your good days and your bad days. And Flocker with a perfect two. Yeah, clearly having himself a good day. So Flocker, three to zero, is gonna move on again in the winner's bracket. Looking good, man. Yeah, looking phenomenal. And again, especially for the zero players, the early matchups that they play, seeing how consistent they can be with their loops, seeing how they feel, seeing, because uh, as the night goes on, as everybody plays more, everybody's going to be more warm. I'd say the consistency is probably going to rise a little bit. So, so to see that level of consistency this early, it's a good showing. He came in warm, man. <laughs> came in warm for <laughs> sure. We'll have to see, though. Thank you again, guys, for being here with us. Friday Night Marvel for Frosty Faustings 13. It's going to be so much more coming on. going to have some uh, guest commentators coming on as well. A lot of things coming down the pipe. It's going to be a great night for Marvel, as always. I mean, every Friday is a good night for Marvel. So it's, Favorite day of the week. Yeah, now. I was going to say. <laughs> All right, so who do we have coming up next? It's going to be the question I got. Oh, we're going to have Coach Steve versus Ooh. Owen. So, 
Oh, so the coach, Coach Steve. Thank you so much, Admiral Funk. I see you, brother. Love to see though. Love to see about getting Coach Steve uh, and his opponent connected, Owen. I think they're both connected, right? Yeah, they are both connected. Okay. I think, um, you know, obviously with Frosty Fosting's 13 happening, you know, we got a lot of new players. So yes. obviously this is their first time, you know, for a lot of people in the bracket. So it is going to, for the first round or two, you know, a bracket, it's going to take a little bit longer to get people connected. And that's kind of to be expected there. So um, no worries. He's about to button check with Triple Doom. <laughs> Don't yeah, do I mean, it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not legal for tournament, though, guys. Oh, man. We have that on there just in case. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to see, though. <laughs> Getting these two all connected and ready to go. Again, thank you guys for being here with us. It's very nice to be able to share some marble with you all. <laughs> to get one. Okay. We will get it set up, though. See, all right, and uh, both are just playing little button checks teams. I'm interested to see what Owen's gonna play. I think that's been the uh, the main thing with watching a lot of the players that are uh, newer to us. Is uh, I like getting to see the team compositions that they rock because we've seen some very interesting stuff from a lot of players. That is honestly the coolest part. The most exciting. Because you you sure. know the you know the normal teams you see with Virgils and Dooms, and of course. Uh, zeros, it's the obscure things and teams that you like to see. And the ones that work and they got the tech that you haven't seen. Yeah, I was going to say, the people that are able to put in that work and play something that's a little, uh, the road a little less traveled and just uh, do the same amount of effort. I, I love watching that so much. Up to see though, getting into versus and we're going to get into character select here. So Coach Steve versus Owen coming up. Coach Steve is another player that's been doing amazingly well. You know, a lot of people know Coach Steve plays Dragon Ball, plays Mortal Kombat. But y'all got to remember, he really made his name playing Marvel. That guy Ooh. insane, you know? <laughs> so that boy insane. All right, let's go. <laughs> so we are going to have Coach Steve here on the right. Owen. Give me rocking the Ryu. Okay. So oh. we've seen a few Ryus. That was his throughout team the time. on the check. Yeah, so we've seen we've seen a few reuse throughout time. We'll have to see how this goes for Owen here. And he's actually uh, he's playing Solar Flare Assist, so he's gonna be playing the Meter Gain Assist for Ooh. Amaterasu. It's gonna look like the get in zero. That's what that's gonna be for. Yeah, I'm not sure uh, how I feel about that, but uh, it looks like it's gonna be interesting tech. Is Solar Flare the Reflect? He's gonna be playing the Reflect so far. Snipes an assist early. A great reaction from Owen. And he got Doom a little bit there, but then Owen gets clipped by the Crouch H by Coach C. Yeah, the problem is once you get hit by Coach, you can say goodbye to your character. Here we go with the 50-50. A nice block and a, a good, really good interrupt. Yeah, personally, I'm kind of surprised to see you go for the snap there. But uh, I guess he has a plan. Yeah, you definitely got to be scared of the dog. Uh, even even if you don't have something as easy as Doom, every character can, in theory, do the two-button follow my lead tech with Ami. So I do respect this. As long as they have X-Factor, you know the two buttons is a threat. He misses the Tiger Knee. Owen gets another chance, but immediately picked up again by Coach Steve. We'll be able to get the Crumple here. We're going to secure our kill. Into the maneuvers. All right, he gets a setup after this too, so Ryu's gonna, he might have to pay to see what side. Oh, and just the meaty javelin will be enough. Owen, not respecting the meaty. Gonna go down here, the crouch heavy into the X Factor. Coach Steve, he's gonna make it one to zero now. There were a couple really good decisions on Owen's part though. In the beginning, the early, the early representation that he can't call assist for free, goes straight for the super. That was a great interrupt from Amaterasu, just wasn't able to fully confirm it. Some good things from Owen I'll, very early on in this. Absolutely. Like the sniper earlier on, but we just got to be able to get some buttons out there and put stop Coach Steve. Same thing there is a nice block, but Coach is able to navigate and the low uh, the low mobility of Ryu kind of showing there. Nobody able to just kind of get across the screen and impose his will in that situation. So two meters to get his team back in order and Coach Steve setting himself up in prime position here. A zero coming in on the mix up. Javelin. Yeah, and I think that potentially Owen was just trying to charge his buster, maybe calling it a little bit too early. Uh, if you wait until you're in block stun, you're able to buffer the charging of your buster, but you can't just swing the button on the incoming there. 
A little bit tough. So Coach Steve, another two meter spent. The team back in order. Amaterasu is going to have to guess. Cross up with the shield. But unfortunately, Coach drops it. We get a slowdown by Owen. Grab by Coach Steve right there. Yeah, that was a good choice to X Factor and get the throw there. Kind of kill some of that slow time. All right, do we know when? Okay. See if we get the OTG after. No, we're going to choose to hold on to the X Factor. Okami shuffle again, but the beam interrupts. Ooh, and a nice block on the cross up. Owen. Dashes back under. Coach, though, with the anti here. Owen getting a little antsy, jumping a little bit too much. Against uh, against a player with the movement of Coach Steve using a Doom Beam and a character that can convert off the beam so easily, you have to be careful keeping your feet on the ground. Oh, wow. And then he gets hit by the Centurion Rush. Yep, so on the crumple. He's going to look for a snap this time. Oh, and I, who knows which side. Coach Steve is going to be able to kill with just one meter here. All right, shield out. Looks a cross up. His coach confirms, but drops it, unfortunately. Oh no, must have missed input by Owen right there to get just the level one super and gets punched big for him by Coach Steve. Yeah, he's gonna lose zero. So it's gonna be all down to the ordinary guy, the shoeless warrior. All right, he manages to get away there. Spends his meter. No assist call from Coach though. Oh wow, and the DP for the trade. He used the super right afterwards. And he baits out the Rocket Punch. Pretty decent so far from Owen. He's getting the momentum to be able to get this comeback, though. The beam will hit, and Coach is more than ready. You see him preemptively crouch blocking, knowing how the situation is going to unfold. 3-0 to zero in favor of Coach Steve. Absolutely. Doom Beam was already out there, and Coach Steve was already blocking. Yep, that's the smartest thing you can do. As soon as you see the opponent put themselves in a situation where the assist is going to punish, as a Nova player, when you see Doom Beam is certainly going to hit, you know from just about any range you can pick that up. It's no longer it's no longer <laughs> Nova's problem. Let Doom handle it. You can just mash jab afterwards. Absolutely, so smart. my man. <laughs> so smart. All right, so up next, though, we're actually going to have two Canadians play. I know what you're thinking. Who the fuck seeded this bracket? But uh, yeah, we got two Canadians playing here. One from Ontario and one from Alberta. I think that's what it's called. I don't, I don't know, bro. I mean, Canada's got provinces. I can't even <laughs> spell provinces. You know what I mean? But you know, we got the DAC going up against the Quack. Obviously, you know, more affectionately known as Quackbot. Uh, but yeah, obviously Quackbot has been, or the Quack has been killing it with his Modoc here lately in the, the last few weeks. But uh, the DAC, this is our first time seeing them. They're playing out of uh, Ontario there. So, okay. uh, like I said, they're at least 1,500 miles away. So, don't be like, oh, why Canada got to play Canada? They're far, <laughs> bro. <laughs> far. All right? Oh, man. <laughs> Pretty far. <laughs> we'll have to see, though. It's been uh, really nice to see Quack play recently. has been playing so much MODOK. And boy, do I love watching <laughs> the MODOK. From everything from the mix-ups, the potentials for the zoning game, even into the setups with both both of his assists, he can access jamming ball bomb off of any touch. So he can jam on command off of anything. That's what I'm excited about. <laughs> I love watching characters get jamming bombed and then snapped out, and then you forget, and then it's all, you don't know what's going to happen after that. Yeah, and they come out with that split second still having to block. Oh, no. <laughs> That's the good. worst good, situation. We'll have to see, though, how it goes, seeing both players get into it. Getting our button check rolling. Again, guys, thank you so much for being here for us here broadcasting. Frosty Faustings 13 has been a blast so far, and there's still so much good Marvel to be played. Damn, I'm just having a ball. I, just, I, I get more and more excited for these Marvel things every single week, and then getting to do it for Frosties, even oh, yeah. more exciting. 100%. Yeah, I know the uh, I know the first round matches have been a little bit more one sided. Uh, you know, that's how it goes sometimes in the first round. Obviously, not a lot of surprises yet. But this is the last first round match. Up next, we're going to be starting the second round here after after the quack match. So uh, just to give you a little preview, it's going to be footwork versus Zenpool. So this might this is going to be a battle of the Ryu's. If y'all remember footwork, I don't know if he still plays Ryu, but uh, shout out to the homie footwork. I haven't I haven't seen that man in a minute, but. Uh, and obviously, we all know about Zenpool, the Ryu Akuma. Is it Iron Fist? 
That's not Iron Fist. That's Deadpool. That's Deadpool. Deadpool. Let's say. And you you know he has I didn't mean you to got one high I, didn't, I didn't mean to offend you like that, Zenpool. I, I'd, I'd hate to accuse anybody of playing Iron Fist. You know what I mean? That's not a mistake you want to make. Shots to the homie Spartan Throne. <laughs> Sorry, Spartan Throne. Bro. Leave Sparty out of this, man. <laughs> Oh man, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Except <laughs> Rip Weaver. <laughs> All right, so getting into this button check, guys. Again, thank you so much for hanging out with us. It's been a ball. All right, Sparty, okay. All right, here we go. Getting this through. So, uh, again, I think the most interesting thing is going to be seeing how people adapt to Modok. Because Modok is obviously a character we do not see as often, I can say. Uh,. Half as many players uh, of most of the other high tier, top tier representations, because Modok is a high tier. Don't get it twisted. That character is insane if you haven't seen it. If you haven't seen, uh, Quack is one of the best examples of showing you what Modok is capable of. Main, main number one tip don't get hit. Yeah, please no. Jamming Bomb will ruin your day. We all know this, but that's what Modok has to do. As soon as that happens, then the snaps come, and then it gets progressively harder. And also more fun to watch. Oh, more fun for us. Oh, yes, yes. For it's us, really fun watching Modok. And nobody, you don't want to be the guy on the receiving end of the Modok. It happens to me. I'm like, this yeah. ain't fun. Yeah, you don't want to be on the receiving end of the Modok. <laughs> <laughs> we will have to see, though, getting this all set up and getting these two in. Still getting that button check rolling. Working on his Street Fighter 4 Ryu combo. See a crouch medium fireball. First Street Fighter 6. All right, looks like we've got these two. We got them both in. Looks like we're just waiting on one. Maybe. Yeah, still waiting on one. They were both moving, right? There we go. Quackbot picking his stuff on the right. This is what we've been seeing from Quack. All throughout the TNS uh, tournaments here, all throughout all of the Parsec Marvel tournaments. Shouts to everybody who's run all these, uh, keeping the Parsec Marvel alive. Oh, this is the best thing for 2020, 2021 so far, man. Honestly, it saved us. And Point Hawkeye oh. is going to be the response here. Okay. So Point Hawkeye actually has some upside to and Iron Man Beam. So this is a lot of upside. I respect so that. The actual upside of the assist that he has in neutral. Uh, Hawkeye's pretty damn good at breaking the Dorito, and with Iron Man Beam behind it, that's it only gets better. I mean, this team's meant for Hawkeye. He's sent on jam and a good beam, so like this is a Hawkeye team if I ever seen. It. Yeah, very point centric for sure. Bro, tell me what it is about Canadians that love Iron Man so much. Canadians stay loving Iron Man. <laughs> Frank West and Iron Man. I swear to God. <laughs> okay, cross arrow hits. He's Gets the Gimlet just to make sure that he's not going to be able to confirm off the missiles and tags into Dante. So opts for the uh, the alternate matchup here. Quack is able to get the first significant hit though. Missiles coming down. Off the balloon bombs. He's going to cash out all that knowledge. That's enough right there. Yeah, certainly enough. Just with the microwaves. He's going to be able to tag Modok back in. Team back in order. Here comes the mix up. Good situational, situational awareness by Quack to just wait. Yeah, and it can be very, very tough. Okay, there's the jamming bomb. And oh. that at that point, once you get jammed, that's just an unblockable. <laughs> there's nothing you can really do there. That's a pure guess. It's like, which way is up and down? Which What, what button's well, Up and down doesn't get changed. No. It's just left and right. Okay, just it. left and right. So here we go. Gets the light. Almost gets there. Almost gets him on the punish there. The standing light not safe on block. Oh, and a perfect confirm into the rocket punch. Keeps it very safe, very simple. Quack. One to zero. That's another thing, too, that's really important. Uh, playing Sentinel is not being, afra being afraid to uh, fight with him on point. If you ever get caught with Sentinel on point, you got to be comfortable to pilot the robot. The, the drones are good, but you got to know what to do with them. Yeah, you don't want to be just a drone player. You want to be a Sentinel player. Okay, so There's early. With the early snap, he got the jamming bomb off. Dak is able to answer a little bit and get the launcher, but he's not able to get anything afterwards. So Quack's still taking control. Two characters jammed now. All in the same situation. Dante just not able to make it happen off the jamming bomb. So Iron Man coming in, potentially still jammed. 
And actually got hit on the secondary mix up there. When the jamming bomb ends is another tough part of that. And a big confirm off of the two. Ooh, the X-Factor drop right there with the S, but regains his composure and gets the grab. Big time command throw, wow. And again, same situation. Quack gets stuck with a Sentinel on point, not having time to tag. Even with Hawkeye coming in, he knows his mix-up game is strong enough. He's confident to pilot the robot. So that's two to zero now in favor of Quack. All right, taking a little second. You know, it's a good thing to get your thoughts. Dak is going to have to be able to get some semblance of control here. We've got to interrupt these drones calls, but it's so difficult when Quack always waits until he has a Dorito before he calls drones. Makes it so hard to actually interrupt without spending meter. Absolutely, and uh, Dak's literally often to block that, so he gets the free mix up every time. We got the snap here by Quack. Oh, fakes the low, and that's even tougher. Modok only having uh, one really quick normal low option. Being able to threaten there, cancel into the high. Right. So Every time I see that big Dorito in front of me, I just put down my controller. That's a wrap. If I'm in a corner and I see that, I know I'm not getting the play. <laughs> here we go. Potential perfect here. Gets his second Dorito set up. Tells on him. Whoa, what a grab by Quack. And he confirms it. Has X Factor. How much do we get off of it? Goes for the body attack. Drones are coming. Dude, did these combos end? Not anytime soon. Build up another two meters on the X Factor. Here's the pressure. Dak has the X Factor. No, he's just going to use level three. Okay. He's got X Factor here, so he's going to be able to take advantage of this for a full combo if he can. Oh, no, but he drops the smart bomb. Might be able to pick it up still. No. Yeah, gets Unibeam instead. Kill Illumination gives him time. That's going to make sure that Sentinels. Oh, oh, and he no. had the X Factor was the correct decision for sure, but wasn't able to quite get out of the way. And Quack is going to make it three to zero. Looking incredibly strong. The Modoc playing with a confidence today. Bro, I get so excited when I watch Modoc play, man. That's so fun. So good to see. Shout outs to Quack, though. Shout outs to Dak as well for playing today so far. So, like I said, obviously, this is a double elimination bracket. So, for those of you that are in the bracket, make sure you pay attention to the Discord. Uh, yes. I know you guys are chilling in the chat. We appreciate you guys tuning in. But, yeah. So. Yeah, definitely make sure you guys are keeping up with that. Keep this uh, keep this train rolling here for Frosty Faustings 13, everyone. Thank you so much for being here, for us being able to bring you this Ultimate Marvel versus Capcom 3, what we really want everybody to see. Yeah. You know, one, thing, one thing to mention here, you can see on that bar on the bottom right of your screen, that is our Match Arena. Mm. So if you type in exclamation Match Arena, you can get a link to the Match Arena. There's a free code there, so you can put in a free 50 cents to the prize pool and contribute your own and do some sponsor quests as well. Mm. Definitely hype up the prizes for these guys. We're already off to a great start. $58 to start the day. So, I mean, and it, the night is very young. Yes. It's not even night for some of you guys yet, you know? <laughs> so say. it's the afternoon for the West Coast. So, like I said, it's going to be great. I think once we hit a certain amount, I think it's, if it's over $650 or something, the payout goes to top eight. And these guys definitely deserve it for the kind of yes. matches they're going to be putting on later. So, pretty oh exciting. So. We'll have to see, though. We're getting our two players in for button check here. And correct me if I'm wrong, is Zenpool back on stream? Uh, yeah, so this is going to be Zenpool versus Footwork. Ooh. So like I said, Footwork, the Ryu god of the Midwest, obviously one of the Midwest's finest Marvel players, along with Dual Kevin, Joey D, you know, uh, Frankie G. I, <laughs> I need to hurt. He was like, oh, oh, Frankie, oh. <laughs> you know, so uh, yeah, obviously, you know, Definitely excited to see my boy Footwork play here. We're gonna see what kind of action he's got for us. If he's got any rust he needs to shake off. Zenpool, on the other hand, very active. You know, obviously a, play, a great player out of the West Coast. So the distance is a little far. The connection is not as good as if he was on the East Coast or the Midwest. But he's been playing in our tournaments and he has performed admirably. Looks like uh, looks like he's not gonna be playing the Ryu though. He's gonna be starting off with the Wesker here, uh, from what we can see. So I like that team. I think this is a, I think, I mean, I think 90% of the cast is better than Ryu, so that's, uh, that's my opinion there, <laughs> but, uh, you know, this is a good start. 
Weasel shot too. Gets the confirm. So it works in. All right, big time tech. And he actually tags into Ryu early, but the throw, see, that's the knowledge of being a Ryu player yourself, knowing the gap and knowing you can get that throw there. And that might pay off big for footwork because he definitely does know that matchup, having been a Ryu player for so long. Yep, able to apply some safe pressure here is Zenpool with the dash up, crouch, medium, footwork with the confidence. Same situation there, just dashes up with the weasel shot. And the movement so far from Footwork is looking very clean. Very little rust on the movement. And he's making good use of that Strider assist as well. Gets both palms, Jaguar rush, and that'll do it. Gets his glasses off. And first blood goes to Footwork. Oh, what a best cross up right there. He's looking good. Oh, and hits him out of the super, so it's all down to Akuma. Tatu on the way in. And Tatu again, twice in a row, looking like third strike. He said it's plus. <laughs> there you go, dashes under, tries to go for the palm. Hammer auto-corrects and hits him so deep. Oh no, the drop after the with H. All right, Zenpo still with a good chance here since he has Akuma, still has a little bit of X-Factor and tons of meter left. Oh, but unfortunate for him. Footwork able to anti-air him. Finish it off, no, but he drops here at the most crucial moment. And he actually does in DHC. He had Excalibur, he had orbs, a couple opportunities, but he's gonna opt to give Dante away here potentially. See how much damage Zenful gets off of this. Not quite gonna kill. Yeah, just a so pixel. Close. And I think he knew that it wasn't gonna kill. He didn't want to give up Strider, or he might give up a whole character if he did not play it correctly. So I think that was the move there. Yeah, and then the same situation there. If Zenpool goes for a chip out super, he does Devil Must Die through him. DHC's into Legion. Zenpool's out of the game there. He knows in advance that with the five meters, Footwork had the answer. Oh, what a throw off the start right there. Already looking good for Footwork. Yeah, Footwork opening up early. Gonna have a reset, a Strider behind. Double teleport, doesn't quite get there, but the second dash up, another Crouch Light. Looks for the throw, it's not gonna happen, and Zenpool's able to get his tag off. Oh, DP, Strider doesn't even touch him. Yeah, the early shore you. I like the timing there. Was able to answer the, uh, was able to answer the assist, but not able to answer the stagger pressure. Footwork completely in control here. Not securing any kills. Well, now he's securing the kill with yeah. the level three. But you know, you you commit to that multi-touch game when you play Wesker with this Strider assist when you're going for that Vajra reset game. You have to. It doesn't do enough damage based off one level one to another level one. You got to opt for level three, which he does there. I'm still looking good. Tatsu gets the hit. Projectile counter actually gets stopped. So Zempel, again, has the answers for those situations. Double Katana Rama into the super. Wesker goes down, and Dante is going to have to eat a mix up here. Oh, what a teleport by Zenpool. We offer the X Factor right there, too. This should be enough to get Dante. Yeah, big time cross up. And I love the X Factor commitment for sure. Uh, there is a true anchor in uh, Strider coming in. But he's confident he can get him just one mix up here. The overhead, so clean from Zempool. And that's where the X Factor, betting the X Factor comes in. You know he's coming in with his, but he still has to block that mix up. You know you have the confidence to get him, and you can definitely kill on one touch. Absolutely. If you were able to get between that overhead, that would have been the perfect spot. But, you know, hindsight's 20 20. So, one to one. Set up those pineapples and the footwork playing a lot more cautious so far. A little bit more runaway here. It's working out so far. It's a little bit behind in the chip war, but it's incredibly difficult to get ahead on Deadpool here. You just really got to look for your shot. And there it was. Unfortunately, the drop, but neutral continues. Oh, yeah, my footwork right there, but we you know, see the reset towards the end once uh, he gets the spike. Potentially kill here? Yeah, Ooh, level okay. three might be able to do it, and it should. You know, in 2021, it's still kind of strange to see weasel shot assist. You know <laughs> what I mean? It's not something you see every day. Oh, hits him with both. Whiffs a button for the fans. Still has time to confirm off the jam session. And we're going to see a snap. I think it's an amazing decision. Yo, the counter. So much from footwork here, and he's gonna be able to kill Akumas, and this is the winning roadmap. Oh, just, just Ryu coming in. He's able to get his feet on the ground, five meters, but how do you hit him? That 
Could have been a start, but Weasel Shot's able to interrupt. Applying that stagger pressure, footwork not cracking. Oh, and another DP. Slowly but surely, Zempel was making a case here. That was a bait. And he gets three meters out of him for it. Yeah, that was definitely a missed input there. He got negative edge from the screen flash. And then when he input the quarter circle a second time, he got the DP super instead of the quarter circle super. Unfortunate for Zenpool, but Footwork's gonna take that one. I did not know Footwork actually had another job as a psychic. <laughs> I was gonna say. <laughs> what in the world was that counter? Goes up again, and that's the, one of the tough situations is as Ryu, Ryu wins neutral there and then gets a stagger pressure off of it. Hard to deal with. He's gonna use a Tatsu. It's actually gonna hit the assist, and he kills Dante for it. And has a safe DHC that punishes. Yo, that was an IQ right there. Yeah, it was a big drop, but Zempool is able to blow this game open. A big time lead, gets a cross up, it's not able to finish. Yeah, throw definitely the easier confirm here, so he should be able to finish this very easily. All right, so it's all gonna be down to Strider coming in. And ordinary man's gonna get his chance, gets his hit. And with the second meter gained, that should be it. Strider's very, very squishy, so two meters should just do this right away. Yep, Tatsu into the two Super Zen Pool. Ties it up, two to two for our fi our first game five here tonight. Yeah, you. I'm down here busting my ass while you sit on yours watching the third wall break. <laughs> Deadpool's such a good character. All right, here we go. Game five. Momentum definitely Zen Pool's favor here. See what Footwork can do about it. The light on the way down is not going to answer. Zempool opens it up with the first clean hit. Oh, the overhead. Wow. But doesn't get it, but it's the lows. Yeah, same situation. The stagger pressure holds up, and Zempool, first blood. Up guns just to deny the second jump. And another great throw. Isn't able to confirm it. Still advantage Zempool though. Looks for quick works, not gonna happen. And again, the defense on 10 for Zempool. He's able to block all of these Vajra mix ups. Really, no sweat about it. Footwork's gonna have to make something happen here. Gonna have to beat him in footsies to potentially get it, one of these air plays to connect. He's being very cautious right now. Doesn't want to get hit, you know, very spacious with the Vajra assist. Yeah, it's definitely an extremely passive play here, and I don't know if it's going to pay off or not. He's definitely been eating a lot of chip because of it, putting himself in some bad defensive positions here. I was going to say passive definitely can work, but maybe a little too passive, and footwork loses Dante. So Strider is going to have to do it on his own and might not even get the chance. We could be able to kill here with the X-Factor. Definitely has the resources for sure. Yeah, and on the DHC, Zenpool's actually just going to end it there. Three to two. Zenpool over Footwork. What a match. Clean a play one. from Footwork, though, I will say. for uh, I haven't seen Footwork play in a very long time. The movement was looking very, very crispy. Everything was all there. Yeah, uh, definitely. Just uh, need to get used to Parsec a little bit more. I think that was the only difference there. You can tell the mind is still there. His fundamentals are still there. But, yes. of course, you know, Zenpool, the godlike Ryu Akuma player from the West Coast, Doing it big, giving us an exciting match. But yeah, I mean, that's what I like about footwork. Footwork is, you know, there's a lot of Dante players that use jam session yeah. because they love jam session, you know. But, you know, it's, they're not real Dante players, you know. There are a million assists you can get to use instead of Weasel Shot, though. And you still pick Dante. You still pick Dante. That's how you know you love that character, you know what I mean? That's how you know. He said, yo, I need a beam. I'm going to pick Weasel Shot. <laughs> <laughs> because, I, because they love Dante. Oh, man. Oh, his uh, footwork said he kept disconnecting during the match. Unfortunate, oh, okay. yeah. You know, and it's definitely the one good thing about Parsec is that if one player is having connection issues, it doesn't affect the other as long as you guys are using Crazy. a neutral host. So that's uh, that's the godlike part. Shout-outs to you guys, though, for boosting up that match for Reno. I see you guys already up to $92 since the last game. So excellent. Thank you so much, guys. All right, 
So it looks like our next players are already getting connected here. So we're going to get into a button check here soon. And it looks like actually just getting into the, the match. Yeah. So oh, GC Yoshi, Frankie G, these are the kind of matches Yo. I wanted to see. You know what I'm saying? GC Yoshi. I'm so excited to watch the standing S. We make all the standing S memes with Sentinel. And now the, the true king, the one true warrior is here. Yeah. GC Yoshi. <laughs> GC Yoshi definitely playing on a NorCal though, so the connection is definitely going to be somewhat at a disadvantage for him, but it's okay. Oh, or maybe it's not okay. Frankie G here taking advantage with a happy birthday to start the match. Yeah, opens it up early. Going to be able to go for the DHC, and he's going to end it into Virgil. How much meter can we build here? Sentinel's dead, so the job is done. It's just, can we get Chris too? Can we be optimal enough? He can if he finishes. That's, That's a big if. <laughs> Okay, good blocks there on the swords. And he's probably gonna have to let Chris go. Yeah, he does. So Spencer's gonna have to do it alone. <gasps> Respect on that. Frankie actually opts not to use X Factor and goes for a reset. That's one meter now, uses the X Factor here. How much meter are we gonna be able to gain? Goes into sword loops. Oh, and a little bit too far. Okay. Oh, and the foot dive to the back of the neck will end it. And GC Yoshi had the right idea. He goes for that situation, goes for the uh, the arm, goes for the X-Factor, immediately blocks, just wasn't expecting the raw tag, I don't think. All right, able to threaten quite a lot here. Almost confirms off the fire grenade. I love that GC Yoshi is throwing tons of fire grenades. Frankie G gets a happy birthday again. Yeah, same exact situation. And this might be a, uh, a side effect of a lot of people getting a lot more Chris matchup experience here, playing as people like Living Legends. So now people are a little more aware of the matchup. We'll have to see. GC Yoshi unfortunately hasn't been able to get too much started here. He gets the raw tag out. And Frankie with the drop. Spencer is going to get a chance to fight. Oh, Disruptor Clips, and Frankie's on top of it, and a hard tag to Doom. There you go. Maybe an X-Factor spend here if you're not confident in your ability to kill. No, he's going to do it in two, it looks like. Ooh, no, not no. quite. The follow my lead applies a lot of good pressure. The last grenade is still coming down, but the throw in vulnerability keeps him out of it. He opens him up the low, and that should be enough. And it does, just with the X Factor in the end. Yeah, he wanted to make sure Virgil was there on the uh, <laughs> on the wing quote to make sure you know. Yeah. <laughs> so now two to zero in favor of Frankie G, holding it down. I feel like GC Yoshi had it started really good early on with the uh, fire grenades. He was getting stuff going, but just got caught with that bad assist call. Yeah, it's very difficult to call drones against Magneto when you are an immobile character yourself. But this time, GC Yoshi able to get it done. Gets the flamethrower in. Builds a ton more meter. You saw he was two and like two and a half meters positive on that combo. And kills Magneto with one. So much damage, so much meter. Good set of blocks there. Flame carpet, go snap immediately. Good meaty by GC Yoshi right there. We're gonna definitely have to kill Virgil here. That's a great situation. Throws the grenade to make sure this is all gonna combo. Gets flamethrower afterwards. Straight back in. And that'll do it, so Virgil dying. And no X-Factor spent. That's amazing for GC Yoshi right now. Yeah, it's looking to close this game out. Frankie goes for the Lazy Boy foot dives. Not gonna quite hit. Neutral continues now. Oh, he was hoping he was gonna get confirmed off that butter gun, I think. All right, sets himself up. The light mine. He's getting those grenades out. Frankie with an intelligent jump out. You cannot let yourself get trapped up in those grenades. Yeah, I mean, this is the name of the game. GC Yoshi just throws grenades, calls drones, but unfortunately gets hit by a standing light hard kick. Yeah, standing jab, anti-air. So you have to, have to see how this finishes. He has plenty of meter and plenty of X Factor to kill the whole team here. That is a cross up, land same side. Frankie is gonna kill Spencer with potentially just one, maybe zero. Yeah, so Sentinel's gonna have to do it on his own. He has a hard drive though. Wow, what a throw by Frankie. 
And if you were really paying attention and looking at Sentinel there, he actually woke up looking to the right. So it was even a tougher situation on the wake up, not knowing he was going to be behind him. So Frankie setting himself up for a great mix up. 3 to 0 is going to close it out against GC Yoshi. And that's, again, the staple issue of protecting your assist as an, as an immobile character against a, a mobility god like Magneto. It's just so hard to do. Yeah, definitely, especially for GC Yoshi with his first time being on the West, playing from the West Coast yeah. to the East Coast server. So uh, it's going to be a, th a tough connection for him. But like I said, still good to see these guys getting involved, supporting Marvel, playing and supporting, guys. And also, you guys have been supporting Marvel a lot. Thank you, guys. I see you guys all in the chat here. I see the notifications. And also, the match arena is already up over $100. Speaking of supporting Marvel, though, we're going to... We're going to take a quick break to go over some of the sponsors for Frosty Fossings this year. All right. Just so you guys know, we do have the artist alley going on right now in the Discord that you can see there. So we got dozens of artists in the Discord. Also, some dope merch here. I'm definitely getting one of those shirts. Definitely check that out there. You can check that in the Smash EG page. So obviously, you guys know the Match Arena is going up. We already got over $100. If we hit $650 or more, definitely going to get a top eight payout. That's what we're looking to see. So, and of course, what I'm hyped about, Guilty Gear Strive. Arc Systems, obviously, bringing the rollback netcode. That's what I'm talking about. You know, Grand Blue Fantasy, obviously a dope game. We got more characters coming out for it. So, I mean, you can't ask for more than that. A lot of people using that for Parsec as well. Skullgirls, of course, finally getting a new character here for the first time in five years. That's what I'm talking about, bruh. Skullgirls, a great online game as well. Them fighting herds also. That tournament is actually happening right now for Frosty Fossings 13. So I'm definitely excited about that. Of course, bro, you can't get away from Uniclear, bro. This game is still so good and it's available on the Switch now. So definitely check that out. And of course, if you got old man hands like me, you might want to consider switching over to the Hitbox. Hitbox is where it's at. I actually own two of these. So definitely get on that. Fantasy Strike there. Also, another great game here with rollback netcode. You don't have to grind to unlock characters or anything like that. Just an excellent game. And of course, our main sponsor here, Metafy. Obviously, an esports coaching platform. For those of you guys that haven't heard about it, they are new to the scene. They're bringing some of the best players together to help you with 1v1 coaching. So, many of the players competing today are actually coaching on Metafy. So, it doesn't take you know, and also Metify is just a way to link you to the coaches. They don't take a cut of the coaches revenue. Coaches keep the every penny of the, you know, of their asking rate. So it's all about bringing people together. So definitely check that out. Metify.gg. You want to try to level up your Marvel game. All right. So it looks like we got these two already in for the next button check for the next match coming up again, guys. Frosty Fowl since 13. It's been a huge pleasure to bring you so far the Marvel that we've had. We still have so much more to go. <sighs> I'm just running out of words for it, man. I cannot <laughs> wait best. to see the rest of this go. Bruh. Up next, we got SJ versus Spartan Throne. Oh. oh that's what I'm talking about. Okay, we, got, okay. we got the best Wolverine of Canada versus the best Wolverine of the UK? Bruh. Bruh. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm saying. We'll have to see how it goes. For any of you that have never seen Sparty play, Spartan Throne plays an incredibly unique team composition. Gets a lot done with the Iron Fist assist. Uh, his confirms with the Dormammu, uh, just with the Iron Fist assist in general, are pretty incredible. And he's playing from across the ocean again. There's a UK player playing here on an East Coast server. You're in for a treat, man. Right, here we go, though. Early punish from Sparty. On SJ's Doctor Doom, so already below half on that. Berserker Charge gets the hit, and there we go. SJ is off to the races. Not going to be able to build any meters, so we're going to have to see a reset. Or just a TAC. SJ says, I got these already. We did see one tonight, so maybe we'll get another full. Oh, not There's quite able to finish, yeah, but that's okay. Sparty goes straight to the dive kick, and he's going to lose Wolverine for an Iron Fist. is going to take a grip as well. Dive kick just to try and bait something out. Sparty able to get the throw. What do we spend here? Level three. Okay. I think that's a great decision. He still has an extension afterwards. Plenty of opportunities. Wolverine is also one of the small bodies he can get the multi-bounce of the carpet on. 
he wants to set that up as well. Nope, we're gonna keep it simple, try to get Wolverine out, and we do. Very nice. Jump light, light for the meaty. And it's very important that Spartan kept his X Factor there, because he's gonna want it here for Virgil. Oh, had the hit there, but no confirm. Obviously playing on that 100 MS, definitely difficult for him at times, but that's why we saved the X Factor right here. And he's gonna be able to kill with one. It goes straight into Chaotic Flame, and let's see it. One more mix up, meaty him again, the jumping medium. And you see he jumped back, reading the dash so early. So there you go, Spartan Throne is gonna go up one to zero here on SJ. SJ taking a little bit more of a defensive approach here at the 99 seconds. It's definitely less up to SJ to make something happen since he's sitting on Beam and Virgil. Certainly the onus on Spartan Throne to make something happen. He's able to play pretty well on the defense so far. Gets away. Doom's going to take some extra damage. But not too much just afterwards. Dr. Doom is just getting destroyed by Iron Fist Assist. Yeah, it's been some bad assist calls for, uh, like, assist for assist from SJ so far, but he's been doing a good job of blocking the Iron Fist. Doesn't get his snap. Sparty always goes for a snap in that situation. Actually misses it there. All right, he's just going to pressure down. He has DHC to Stalking Flare if he wants it. That's what he's going to do. So he's getting one mix up here afterwards. And perfect use of the Wolverine Assist. This is just such a hard matchup for Dr. Doom. Yeah, it really, really is. If Doom was able to get on the ground and establish, oh, but SJ is going to make this a lot easier because this is not that hard of a matchup for Virgil. X Factor 2. He's not going to have any meter afterwards, but that's okay. He still gets a round trip mix up. I think Dorm's the problem for SJ's team. I agree completely. I think that's a great decision. But the X Factor from Spartan, the block strings from Virgil, even with X Factor activated, not quick enough to stop. Logan from just busting through. And he throws the buffered movement option. Spartan throw on top of decision making right now. Playing on 10 right now. Okay, so two to zero now in favor of Spartan Throne. All right, Sparty's gonna see if he can make it happen here. SJ almost gets the happy birthday. And just a jump in, SJ gets both. You know we're spending X-Factor. No, we have Rapid Slash. We don't even need to. Is that too low? <sighs> Gets one of them. Dormammu dropped out. But that's okay. Killing Wolverine, Dormammu coming in on a pixel, still a great decision. And a fake cross up on the S, it looked like. So Iron Fist going to have to do it alone. We have seen Sparty try extremely hard, and this is how it starts right here. Yep, gets his crumple right afterwards. Cast some meter out here, probably. Doesn't even need to. Spartan Throne, two mix-ups away. Okay, big time blocks. That was really brave from SJ. In a lot of those situations, Spartan Throne could be mashing Team Super and has the early invulnerability on that uh, the start of the punching Super. Very brave from SJ to just contest like that, and it pays off perfectly, two to one. Kick okay, gets blocked. Two good push blocks in a row, and Sparty's gonna open it up. Can I get a snap here? There's the snap we were looking for. Snaps Doom actually, and not Virgil. That's kind of surprising, honestly. Now he's gonna take out the beam, though, so it's still great. Maybe two snaps is what we're looking for. Spends that meter and the DHC. Is he gonna live with a pixel? Oh. A second snap, all right. What a mix up by Spartan throwing. We're definitely gonna X Factor here. Oh, Might not even need to. need to. Just spends the one meter with the Chaotic Flame. So with X Factor still intact, Spartan looking to try and close this whole set out. No, oh, gets caught on a push block bait though. This is how SJ gets back in the game, five meters. Has level three to kill here. Just gonna go to loops instead. And Spear Flame to finish it. SJ, this is how the momentum starts. We're on a roll. Gets him with the cross-up, the classic Wolverine mix-up. 
And he's gonna kill with one. So now SJ, one mix up away. Iron Fist has to try and do it again. Okay, man, just to get away. Chooses not to X Factor there. And SJ with a very easy punish, but he drops it. He's gonna get Doom. We're gonna get the X Factor. Grab, can he confirm? And he does. All right, one more touch. Potentially, if he gets him on the ground, he might be able to just chip him here. Block the cross up foot dive too. All right, again, one touch from either player here. Dash up medium is gonna be the name of the game. Spear of the Dragon, not gonna happen. The last hit hits him though. The box SJ. on that has to be huge. Yeah, SJ has to be careful about how he uses these aerial options. Dash up medium, he's not able to confirm it. And neutral continues. Spartan applying a lot of good pressure here. Gets a throw, can we convert it? He does, Spartan oh throne. God. With the solo, Iron Fist keeps it together and closes it three to one. Sparty. Sparty. Bro, Spartan Throne is on another level, man. <laughs> this man is playing on 100 MS and doing work like this against one of the best Wolverines to have played the game. Let's, yeah. let's not sell SJ short here. He's definitely Absolutely one of the not. best here to have ever played Wolverine. I mean, obviously, we got the elites like Justin Wong, PR Barog, you know, players like that, myself, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, but at, right after that, obviously, you know, then you got, you know, I mean, SJ is definitely right above, you know, right up there. So, Absolutely. I mean, and for Spartan Throne to be able to come through playing that Iron Fist, man, I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I get a little shook when I see Iron Fist. <laughs> yeah, hold it down. Bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> All right. But up next, though, up next, we're going to have Punk. So, Punk plays a little game called Street Fighter V. You might have heard of it. You know, he might have won some tournaments in that game. He might be the world's best Street Fighter V player. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, probably. Right? Yeah. But he's going to be going up against Garfield here in Marvel. So, yeah, we're not switching games, guys. Punk is coming through and playing that Marvel. He's been competing every week. And uh, now he's trying to win Frosty Fossing 13, you know? We'll have to see how it goes, though. The homie punk, excuse me, the homie pink. The homie pink, PG's very own pink. He's going to be holding it down. I, I don't know why he I don't know why I don't either. know why he signs up as pink on uh, on Smash EG. I don't know But, uh, <laughs> you know, it is what it is. At once, it was Pionk. It was Pionk. It was Pionk. Oh, yeah. okay. it, was, it was Pionk at one point. I think it's just to make, his, uh, make it easier for us to find him or something. So that's probably what the situation is. That's very, very true. But if you guys have not, again, like Tong said, if you guys have never seen Punk play this game, Punk is real. Punk is very, very, he plays multiple teams at a high level. I would say probably the thing we're most likely to see is the Wolverine. The Wolverine has looked the most consistently solid. Yeah, definitely expecting the Wolverine. I think that's the best choice he could make. I agree. But Magneto is definitely an option mm -hmm. as well. Either way, no matter what he plays, he's going to have Dante on the back. Oh, Dante sure. is going to be back there. Dante seems to be his favorite character. And honestly, he's phenomenal with him. I've seen him make a lot of comebacks with that character. So. Very true. I, I mean, we, we've seen him play a competent Morgan. He, he's, he's got a hell of characters. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> For a man that this is his side game, he sure is damn good at this. Yeah. So. <laughs> we'll have to see, though, with these two getting into it. Yeah. Hopefully they're ready to start. Looks like it. So Nova Dormammu. Okay. The very strong team composition here on the left. Nova Dormammu with the Doom, and he opted into Beam, so that's good. I like Beam, I think Beam is much stronger. I think that uh, missiles can be good for both of them, but the net bonus of how positive Beam is for Nova is certainly better than the upside of missiles for Dormammu, I think, if you're gonna play the Nova point. I agree with that 100%. It gives Nova free box dash, dolphin kick, whatever he wants, uh, shield, everything. All right, we'll have to see, though, getting it started here soon. Looks like, oh, actually. What Looks like Punk disconnected, through. guys. Right. I'm sorry. I don't know. Is that Garfield Garfield? No. No? Okay, I was no. going to say. He plays Frank. No. Oh, Different Garfield. Okay. Love to see, though. Again, guys, thank you so much for being here with us for Frosty Faustings 13. So much more Marvel to be played. Dude, the beginning of the night has been crazy so far. Just leading off with Ray Ray. Just uh, the, the leadoff batter, when the leadoff batter hits a home run, you already know where we're headed. That's, that's the wrap at top point. <laughs> it's a marvel. I love it. <laughs> All right. Looks like, yeah, looks like Punk was having some technical difficulties there, but I think he has got it fixed. Is he connected? Excellent, excellent. While we're waiting on him, I just want to give a big shout-out to everybody that's been contributing to the Match Arena, mm -hmm. especially Spit5000. Just put $20 in there. 
Big shout outs to you, brother. $105 already. Dominic the Ford, who also put $30 in there as well. Thank you. Static Gorilla with $10.80. You guys have been doing a great job keeping Marvel going. I appreciate all you guys. But it looks like we are ready to go. Yep, so we will have to see. Punk versus Garfield coming up soon. Yeah, Punk's going to play Magneto. Yeah, and Garfield obviously, you know, hates Mondays, loves lasagna. So we got this going. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the get your tournament stats. <laughs> All right, Garfield. Early with the crouch medium. It's looking good. So far, the beam calls are looking solid. Always calling it when he goes in for that dolphin kick. Sets himself up with the javelin. Gets the hit. Standing medium to confirm it. Garfield potentially looking at first blood here. Supers early. And stalking flare. I get some charges off of this, possibly? Only gets one. A late fish hook. And then a dash back. Actually could have confirmed that, but opt for the little bit of a mix up there. Crouch medium not gonna happen. Garfield. So looking pretty clean though. Throw Ramus living. Oh, unfortunately, once you get caught in that jam session, not much you can do there. Dune just gets them all you. Oh man, he hit him so well with that tri dash uh, low age. Alright, team super, one of the most damaging. It's a missile set up. Here comes. Standing medium actually interrupts him in his movement. Did you do uh, M? Crouching M? That was, that was standing M to catch him out of a dash. And then Punk immediately, the jam session afterwards, gets that super jump confirmed. That's the most important thing. If you've got John Dante jam session, I, you need hits off of that from anywhere. Oh, yeah. neutral. Yeah, good block. Scary with the box jump there. Punk showing off a little bit of the defense, though. And that's the one thing I always see from Street Fighter players that are getting into Marvel or coming back to Marvel, is their defense is so good. They're so patient. They know when to wait for their turn. I've seen it from Brian F. when he plays Marvel as well. Yeah. All right, so he is actually going to go into Devil Trigger. I actually love the X-Factor launcher there. Big potential payout with the Vortex combo. It's coming through for Punk. This is the grapple, reverb, shock, million dollars, will seal it. Punk is going to go one to zero. Can you go back on that? He confirmed Vortex off of airplay. That was serious that was, stuff. That was God mode, yes. All right, going into game two. Garfield, I was actually looking very strong and was able to get first blood in that situation. And potentially off of this, I'd be able to get it again. No, a little bit of a drop there. And over commits with the crouch medium. You can't get under Magneto without your assist like that. Yeah, and uh, Punk had that snap, that H literally waiting for him. Doesn't have the second meter to get out. He does not confirm it. Could have X-Factor, could have jabbed. There was a lot of things that could have happened there, but Garfield got a deer in the headlights, but he gets a throw, so he's still in it. Oh, and the teleport's a little early. If you teleport too early, stretch, stretch the screen too far, it never gets the wall bounce. Punk. Punk got the low right there and should be able to get care of Dormammu here if he can finish any dozens. All right, so Punk tags in the Doom for the potent mix-up. Big block by Garfield. Maybe a little too patient. It'll just let him get away with that butter gun. Definitely could have mashed jab on him there. So maybe a, maybe a little too much patience on the side of Garfield in a couple of these situations and loses a meter on the wake-up. Okay, Punk goes for the low. Oh, scramble, scrambles. Wow, so off the scramble, Garfield just still sticking with the buttons. He's ready to brawl with them. I don't think he's believing because he, he checked Punk at least three times and got hits. And Gravity Squeeze is able to get the hit. Okay. Misses two flinks there from Punk, so he's not able to get across for the mix-up. All right, jam session. Still able to represent a lot of pressure, and this is firmly in Punk's favor since he has that jam session. Able to control so much space, and he still has one um, one super on deck to be able to clear the screen if he wants with Shockwave. Yeah, it's going to be really hard for Garfield to even catch Magneto. Yeah, and it looks like he's not even going to get the opportunity. Punk with another missed flink, though. Missing another confirm from a little bit of a movement error. Yeah, he's not stressing it right now. He has the lead. He's playing yeah. very comfortably, playing it the right way as well, too. And he takes that game. 
Yep, so there you go, two to zero now in favor of Punk. So Panda's very own is trying to get his Maul on here. Garfield able to reestablish though. And Garfield being a little too linear with the offense. Obviously, Nova Dolphin Kick is very polarizing and you can get away with it quite a lot, but when it becomes the only thing you're going for, it, it's a little predictable and he's able to call those see the counter call jam session he's starting to get a, a read on the pacing of it we need to change up a little bit on the timing oh punishes the raw tag with the crouch h and that's going to be huge for punk right here should be able to get it and obviously tac's here now oh but the drop yeah misses his opportunity there but the same side with the jumping medium it's Ooh. the low all right nova coming in Oh, confirms that as well. So Doom has to do it alone. X Factor 3. Garfield looking at his tournament life here. Oh, I, winner's bracket life, excuse me. And Punk able to hold it down. Level 3. Gravity Squeeze is going to close it out. And Punk, 3 to 0. He's going to move on in the winner's bracket. Looking really good right there. Yeah, absolutely getting it done. Punk, the Magneto. See, now he makes me second guess myself because I doubled down and said I was expecting the Wolverine and the Wolverine look best. <laughs> so, I was looking just as clean as anything else we've seen from yeah, him. He said he's a Magneto <laughs> player, bro. <laughs> Damn, dude. Why do you make me look stupid like that? It's just bro. like, no, it's uh, hey, like, Logan, I'll play that later. You know what I'm saying? It'll be fine. Wolverine for when, was when he was first starting on Parsec. He said, you know what? I can play Magneto now. I got me used to it. <laughs> All right, though. So Punk moving on in winners. We're going to have to get our next match queued up. Yeah, so our next match here, we're going to have Joker. So Joker from Canada, the Magneto, formerly Iron Man, but now Zero. Magneto, Zero, Sentinel player. Obviously, you guys have probably seen him. One of the best players ever in Canada. Uh, I mean, I mean he's, there's not enough good things I can say about the man. Yes. He is phenomenally talented. He's got a lot of results in Canada and America to back it up. He's going to be going up against Zebu. So oh, okay. Zebu, obviously a god like Zero player. Formerly of Tennessee, now in Texas. So we're going to see what he's going to be able to do because Zebu has definitely worked his way to get this far in the bracket. So he's uh, obviously no one's got an easy bracket here today with 128 players, and half of you guys are killers. I was going to say, at this point in Marvel's lifespan, there's no easy brackets. It can be an eight man local, and wherever it is, everyone there is a killer. Yeah. But if you're still playing Marvel at this point, you're an axe murderer. There's nothing else about it. Yeah, Zebu <laughs> actually just came off a win against Crown Thunder, one of the oh, that's a big win. one of the best Captain Americas in the Parsec era. So that's going to be pretty exciting. But yeah, oh my goodness! Just so you guys know, the the GoFundMe, uh, not GoFundMe. I'm sorry. The uh, Match Arena is up over two hundred dollars. Big shout outs to Among Shadow who's been supporting us here on the stream and putting a hundred dollars in it. Let's go. First, mar first Marvel, uh, Marvel major in almost a year. That's what he said. And it's definitely true. This is actually the biggest bracket that we've seen uh, since EVO 2019, I would say. Uh, I think so. Yeah. So this is definitely the biggest bracket since then, online or offline. I, I don't think it gets any bigger than 128 players. So shout outs to Among Shadows, though, for contributing big time there. Yes. 100 bucks in there, getting that prize pool over 200 bucks. He's trying to get top eight paid. That's what <laughs> we're all trying to do here, exactly. man. Trying to get top eight paid. Exactly. All right. So who are we waiting on here? Oh, uh, we're still waiting on Zebu. Waiting on Zebu for the button it, check. It looks like they just got button check teams. So. And uh, Zebu no, and Joker, Joker. Joker disconnected. Zebu and Joker have had a really similar, I guess, uh, path into, uh, I guess, performing on Parsec. Both of them came in a little bit, came in early. Uh, started getting used to it. We're uh, looking a little bit shaky in the very, very beginning because obviously the first time you play Parsec, it's so different. It's it's a huge it's a huge way to get used to it. And these two being able to grind, they've been uh, playing on all the open queues, playing in all these brackets. Both, again, same thing, looking incredible. Yeah, I, th I mean, it's not. It depends on how far you are, of course. Yes. But yeah, I mean, it definitely takes getting used to. I don't, I don't think it's extremely different. Uh, mm -hmm. Obviously, a lot of the best players that were yes. you know dominating offline are also dominating online. People like Ray Ray, obviously, phenomenally. Marvello. It is uh, it is different, though, but I wouldn't say it's hugely different. Yes. Uh, but like I said, it does take getting used to, like you said. Got both players connected here, though, getting ready to start. Finally about that time, ready to get it started here. So, Joker. And I'm always interested to see in all these Joker sets uh, the zero. It's been, it's been the biggest change for him recently, and uh, it's been paying off 
incredibly well. Well, you think he's gonna go zero off rips? Sometimes oh, he's he goes going, off he's going, Iron Man and then changes his. He goes zero all the way yeah. today, I think. I, I, I do not think we see any, right, I right. think we don't see any Iron Man today. I think we're all zero today. It's all business. Okay. He's trying to be the new Frosty's right, champion. Yeah, Come yeah, on. You're right, you're right, it's business. You're right. We'll have to see though again. Thank you so much for everybody here still joining us. Ready to get this rolling. Both players in, both players button checked. Uh, yeah. Just, uh, sorry guys, I was, uh, our, the person that was doing the bets is, uh, was uh, a little behind. No worries, guys. All right, it's time to get it rolling. Joker here on the left. People on the right. All right, it's time to get it started. Oh, this is gonna be so this is good. Gonna be really good. All right. Bomb Wonderland is the pick, and the match is finally beginning. Go, big time throw tech. In that situation, once you get the breakaway, kind of got to favor Zebu here a little bit. Has the orange buster to be able to interrupt those, uh, the Sentinel drones whenever he wants. Got a happy birthday. Oh, drops Magneto there. Yeah, not quite able to get both. Still there, another big block. Uses the shockwave just to hold himself down. Here comes drones. Unblockable situation. Joker spending two meters and making it work out perfectly. That's so cheap. Hey, big time on the cross up. He's able to get away though off of a little bit of a drop from Joker. Neutral continues. Joker's gonna need to try, probably try and look for the snap here. I mean, he has zero incomings. So he definitely has a, a good opportunity against, uh, against Dante, but. I think you might maybe don't kill it in order. We'll have to see though. Ooh, jam session clears. Almost had them both right there. That was a very good call. Actually, again with the forward heavy, is able to interrupt in that situation. That level buster comes out. Z oh no, and the pressure is just a little too much, and Zebu holds it down. What a confirm! Literally, that adjustment, magnificent. Crouching lights. Don't get it done, but the beam it actually vamps the meter from him as well. I think he was trying to go for that shockwave drone situation that uh, Ray Ray is able to set up so often. Get that free mix up. Yeah. Good neutral being played by both players right now. Yep, Zebu is doing a perfect job of when to call these beams. Choker just not being able to really answer any of them until then. He picks up on the tempo of it, gets that mag blast punish. Now Dante coming in, he's gonna have to eat the drones mix up. Low checks him, but he's able to save Sentinel, so it's okay. Tech forward potentially. Still okay. All right, Devil Trigger's up. Shockwave just to answer some space. He actually could have teleported there. There was no more meter from Joker. Yeah, I was literally about to say, I'm like, I'm surprised the teleport didn't come out. And then it also drops the combo right there. No. Yeah, so Zebu making it a little bit harder here, but it's still okay, still in it. X-Factor's gone, but he gets the hit. And now he has a positive matchup here when he has Devil Trigger on. Acid Rain. Oh, and he baits the crouch. Medium, Zebu moving at a thousand miles an hour. Joker said, what's that in kilometers? Tell me out. <laughs> And goes to DT to get that extra 10% damage buff just to make sure he gets the kill here. What a comeback. That one to zero in favor of Zebu. Is that really all you got? All right, so we'll have to see the adjustment here from Joker. Was able to uh, was able to open it up early. Keep himself uh, keep himself ahead for sure. Yeah, got rid of zero real early, and then Doom kind of just hung out for a while. Gets his confirm off the drones, though. You know that's where he's most comfortable. All right, and gets his knockdown. So that's the unique thing about playing. Oh, no, he doesn't finish his loops. But it's okay. We'll take it. It's, it's yeah, still yeah. done. It's still done. He had to reheat him, but they're still eating. It's tough. <laughs> he got him. The lightning almost gets there. Still looking good. Joker resetting the neutral and resetting the neutral certainly in favor of the player that still has all of their resources and all their characters. So 
That's looking good, playing safe and solid. Super came out. Pays the meter for that one right there. Yep. Almost is able to confirm there with the drones. Pressure's on. Chip is a factor now. He blocks after the X Factor, but he still has to get away. Sentinel dies. Wow, what situational awareness by that player to punish that assist. Zebu really holding it down here. He's going to spend the meter. Dante's going to come in. Goes for hysterics immediately, but Joker, knowing he has the Orange Buster in hand, immediately interrupts it. And almost air to airs Tempest. Have you ever even seen that before? That was amazing. It was a good button placement by Joker. Oh, that was, what an anti-air by Zebu. That was amazing. That perfect spacing. That's all right, Joker. Has to make something happen here. He's really only he's really playing with no assists essentially here since he only has uh, uh disruptor uh, not disruptor uh, the grab. It makes it even tougher here with Zebu having the beam, but he's still able to make it work. Stinger, Stinger teleport. I know you know that all too well. Yeah, that was godlike. But unfortunately, drops and goes into only carrots. Yeah, and the guaranteed chip setup actually does not do enough chip. He's so close. He's gonna jump up vortex. Yeah. The Joker knew and raw tag right away. So it's 30 seconds left. Time not quite a factor. Still looking good, Zebu. Looking very healthy here. Joker has more potential to gain here on the slow play with the health gain. And it's getting the life lead is getting a little bit further just piece by piece on a couple bad beam calls from Zebu. Joker is able to punish there and the DP. There we go. Joker gets the kill and now. The dead body glitch. Oh, look at the trades right there. We're pressing buttons. Yeah, wake up rocks. Might not be enough still. We're going to clear the screen right here. The chip is it's looking over, and we're going to some game move. Yeah, with seven seconds left, I was going to say, we can pretty much chalk that one up to Joker. One to one now. Scrambles, scrambles. That was a lot of, uh, a lot of scramble situations in the end. Big time tech. Oh, and if you get into that tech situation with Magneto, I feel like you almost can't win that war of mashing at the buttons at the end. Joker always has the DP assist coming out after the beginning of the battle. When he calls out the up back dash, Joker. Whatever read he had at the beginning of this game worked out so well, but Zebu still in it. What an air to air confirmed by Zebu right there. That's huge for him right now. All right, he's gonna opt not to go into double trigger. Oh, and mistimes his stuff and gets thrown. The Vortex call, that's amazing right there. Does it again, the same thing with the Vortex. So Zebu, one touch away. Ooh, potentially two now, spending that meter. Well, he still has Devil Must Die, so we'll have to see. It's just gonna be about what kind of touch he can get here. Absolutely, if he gets a clean touch here, Sentinel's done, because we know he does not have a lot of health. Oh, and the off the jumping medium. Let me see these Hyper Viper Beams. One time with the hard drive. And it confirms. Straight into the microwave. He knows he's got enough snap. Not a, quite a kill. Level three, that was his only option. Oh, uh, and he woke up and he got a super, so I'm assuming he just did not get his DP. So unfortunately on the tech backwards, just gets caught and now two to one in favor of Joker. Awareness by Zebu. He did not walk forward. He knows that DP assist was going to come. He learned last game. Yeah, he learned the hard way with the <laughs> whole team. It's very difficult. Here we go with Zebu. He's looking good. Joker's getting a lot of uh, getting a lot of mileage out of drones here. There's a jam session. Zebu finally getting to open it up and potentially going to win the point war here. This is what we need to see. We haven't really seen Zebu come into this with a, a ton of momentum, so we're going to have to see how it goes when he's in control of the entirety of the pace of the game. It's like, how's your loops, homie? We good. Uh, yeah, perfectly good. Let's see on the mix-ups. Big time cross-up. Jam session mashes out of it. Great check by Joker. Didn't even have to block it. Medium lightnings almost get there. All right, and he's able to evade most of the drones' calls here. Mainly, like, just seeing who has Buster. Yeah, it's really a lot of the mirror comes down to big block on the low. What a guess. Level three. 
Dark it's his Dante. gone. Yeah, and he gets him with the medium, uh, the medium lightning right afterwards. And now with the drones called, Joker gonna have to get something done with his X Factor. Hits Zebu and is able to finish. All right, so it's gonna be down to Doom. Still has level three X Factor though. Unfortunate drop right here, and Zebu still has X Factor, so there's still a chance. All right, so both of them. Not much meter. X Factor still intact for Zebu though. Joker's kind of buffering the DP, you know, throwing it out. Uses the Buster there. It's really hard. It's very difficult to X Factor guard cancel against Zero since he can just release that Buster. He wanted that throw. And Drone still just eating up so much mileage and so much time. The bottom of the screen staying controlled here. Joker manages to get away with the movement again. Big time throw, and we're under 30 seconds now. Zebu. Clock has started. We have to make something happen. Joker's literally playing the best neutral. He's not overextending himself, playing super safe. And now we got Sogenmu call. Yeah, once again, moves up. We're allowed to take a little bit of risks here. Still applying some pressure. Medium lightning blocks the overhead. Oh, but the medium lightning again just catches him standing, trying to move Zebu. Caught in his movement. It's going to go down. Joker, three to one. Moving on in the winner's bracket. Playing out of his mind. Yeah, looking so strong. Bro, that was an exciting, yeah, exciting really match. Was. But yeah. <laughs> Fortunately, that's how it goes. Matcherino, though, already up over $211 now. Thank you guys so much for supporting that. I see you guys supporting us in the channel as well. Appreciate you guys. Frosty Frostings 13's off to a great start. Don't forget, Frosty Frostings has a weekend full of events. There's going to be a lot of other games being played as well. So. Definitely check it out. But real quick, we're going to go off to some of the sponsors, Frosty Fostings. All right. So I've mentioned the Artist Alley before to you guys. Definitely check them out. Obviously, the FGC artists have had a tough year as well. Show them some love. So like I said, with the merch, definitely it's going to be open till the end of the month. Definitely check it out. Get the beanie. Get the hat. I mean, I'm sorry. Get the hoodie. You know, get the shirt. Get everything, bruh. Match Arena, as we've already talked about, already over 200. So if we get the 650, Top 8 gets payout. So... Make sure to put those codes in for the free money as well. Guilty Gear, I know you guys are excited. We're going to be hosting hell attorneys for that. So it comes out April 9th with rollback. Like I mentioned before, Grand Blue, new character season, character pass two. Definitely a lot of characters coming out. Already a lot of characters in it, honestly. So, and of course, one of my favorite games, Skullgirls. We're definitely getting a new character for the first time in five years. And of course, one of the best net codes out there. Them fighting her is definitely not a slacker in the net court category. Like I mentioned, they're also playing a bracket right now, so go tune in. You know, I'll, I'll, you know, obviously in between our matches. Under night, of course, <laughs> physical edition, definitely coming out for the Switch. Definitely check that as well. Also, you know, one of my favorite games, Head Fox. I know you guys are tired of hurting your wrist there on the joystick, especially if you're doing Morgan loop. So definitely check that out. Head over to hitboxarcade.com slash frosty to check them out. Fantasy Strike, another great game with good net code there. Excellent rollback. So, honestly, it's it's definitely one of the best games for online play. Definitely check them out. But, of course, Metify. You know, if you want to get better at the game, definitely check them out. They'll hook you up with the best coaches in any game that you're interested in, including Marvel. So, you know, like I said, support the, support the uh, players here, support the coaches, you know, and, you know, and get better at the game. What more could you ask for? Check out Metify. Not GG. So, all right, all right, right. You know, honestly, man, I'm thinking about switching to Hitbox. I say I am actually eagerly awaiting for my email to get my cross up because I am so Ooh. excited to get a cross okay, up. So that's you, for me personally. That's going to be my first foray into Hitbox the Hitbox makes world. That, right? Hitbox makes Hitbox that. Hitbox makes yeah. the cross up. It's going to be right. so much fun to use. I cannot wait to get my hands on one. Yeah, I see you, banger, in the chat, homie. I see you. All right. But up next, though, we got Ram Bam versus Living Legend. This is what I'm trying to see. Ooh, so Living Legend, another Chris player, has been playing uh, Chris Akuma, uh, Chris Wesker Akuma. Holds it down a lot in uh, the TNS brackets. and does well in uh, generally all over the Parsec. Uh, the Parsec stuff <laughs> playing out of the Midwest. He is the king of Eat Lead. Yeah, he absolutely <laughs> is the king of Eat Lead. All right. And then we're going to have Ram Bam. Everybody knows the, the tech monster on Twitter. Optimal of optimal. One of the best players. And just one of the all-around nicest people, to be honest. Yeah. Ram Bam, honestly, is definitely one of the smartest and safest zero players. You know, 
Also, uh, top, top three cutest dogs. Yeah, also has the best dog. <laughs> All right, getting into the match. Bam Bam opening it up early. Taking a little bit of chip damage here. Legend able to establish his space quite a bit. He's doing well with the Bucky too. Trying to hold it down with the shotgun. Looks good when he gets the flame grenade. Then you know he likes to start approaching a little bit more. Yeah, that was a big amount of hesitation there from Rambam, not uh, being sure if there was a grenade under him, but the confirm off the jam session, no more hesitation from Rambam. Yeah, we in there, we're gonna see his loops. I will have to see though. I never doubted him for a second. He's not good. for a He's second. Old. So here we go for the mix up. Well, we're gonna see Meaty. No, we are not standing heavy, and he's able to get away. All right, Buster. Oh, the DP and the trades. Yeah, so it's a big time trade there. Sometimes can beat it clean, but uh, I think Living Legend got what he wanted. Kind of reestablishes neutral and gets his glasses off. But the low, once you block jam session, your life is forfeit, my dude. 50-50 usually every time, and he's probably gonna lose Wesker for that right here. If we'll have to see. Legend known for those Akuma comebacks, but your feet have to touch the floor for it to matter. So what's the guess here on the mix-up? Ram Bam sets him up. DPX factor. Yeah, Legend gets a shot. He's gonna go for the chip. Smart, smart stuff by Living Legend right there. Oh, and he crosses him up. The amount of respect it takes there to be able to get to the ground in that situation. Amazing, we got enough for a demon here, Proxy. Uh, and you know he's always looking for it. Oh, and he actually got a standing medium when he landed. I'm gonna just call it. I think he buffered Demon I on his way down. I think he did too, <laughs> man. I think he did too. And unfortunately, he pays for that. And Ram Bam is on the board 1-0. Yeah, I, I normally I don't like to put uh, put actions in the player's mouth. He buffered a Demon landing. Man, there. you know he, he we won know won Legend on goes for it. So here we go. One to zero now. Ram Bam, playing it safe and solid. He's gonna eat a little bit of lead there, and Doom is gonna take quite a bit of a beating there as well. Yeah, already putting a lot of damage on the assist right now, so it's looking good for Living Legend. Ram Bam's gonna have to be aware about those calls. Don't matter now. Yeah, so Genmu into the launcher, uses his beam just to gain a little bit extra meter. Sets him up. Here comes the loop. We're only gonna need two or three, so it's still gonna be okay. And there we are. Incoming for Wesker. Goes just meaty in the second layer. Their late dash with a jam session. Bam bam. Able to keep the vortex rolling. Got to do a lot of work though to kill here though. Yep, we're gonna have to spend one more meter, one more loop. And with two reps, he's gonna have a little Sogen move for the mix up. Kuma touches the ground, he gets that team super. Same situation as before. He's not able to kill, though. Huh. Didn't hold H that time. Yeah, I think he tried to bait something, and he thought that Ram Bam was blocking. Yeah, and a lot of those situations as well, uh, the super is uh, a lot safer if you don't hold H because of the slow projectile speed. You're able to keep them away from you longer. So if he's not confident in the hit, not holding the button can usually make it a little bit safer, huh. or at least harder to punish. Great tip. I actually didn't know that. Very important. Ram Bam goes up 2-0. Yeah, Ram Bam looking incredibly strong. And Living Legend gonna go to character select here. Maybe start the Wesker. This is uh, an adaptation we've definitely seen from him quite a few times, and he's gonna play the Doom. So we've seen this from him once or twice. This is certainly something within his realm of possibility. Doom is literally there to deal with jam session. That's what that calls for. I'll have to figure it out though. Living Legend putting down his namesake, Chris. He's gonna get a both. Oh, Buster, wow. Yeah, Buster's able to interrupt. You can see him pulling the gun out. Oh, and you know Ram Bam converts these. No, he does not convert these. What happened? But he gets his throw, all right. Living Legend, able to get a meaningful hit here. How much can we cash out off of it though? Misses the jump forward for his meaty. That's definitely the only scary thing, man. Is letting Zero live, going back to neutral, and he has some Genmu and Jam Session converts it too. Yeah, certainly the hardest part about this uh, this composition of playing a Wesker team that isn't able to guaranteed one touch that Zero is knowing that he's going to get another opportunity to fight. 
A big time block, cross up, medium. Slow on the movement to get forward. Makes the cross up even harder to block. Okay, doesn't quite get across the screen to be able to convert that. Got them both! Oh, and Legends Doom. Putting in the work of Legends. And he's able to get both here with the beam. So Doom has to do it alone now. That was a free grab attempt right there, but missed by Rambam. All right. Chucking a little bit of plasma. He's able to put him on block. Every bit of chip counts. But the X-Factor is still intact, so Legend's got to be safe. All right, good neutral right here. No one's overextending. And then Living Legend gets that H. Dude, the Street Fighter deep cross-up with the jumping heavy. And now... Two to one, potentially a comeback here for Living Legend. Maybe having Doom on the squad was just all he needed. The beam is helping a lot. <laughs> Absolutely. We're going glasses off early. All right, we got the blockster. All right, so again, Moo is activated. Rambam's gonna take a shot. Ooh, misses a confirm off the Tatsu. Was going for something a little more optimal, maybe looking for a wall bounce. Dash up launcher, certainly the easiest way to confirm that. Legend is trying to get everything he can out of it. Can you blame him against a player like Rambam looking down zero? Uh, absolutely. I mean, you got to take everything you can get to win these matches. Got them both again. That's huge for Living Legend. Yeah, same situation. He's oh. able to hit both. Doesn't kill both. Should have supered in the air, but catches Doom on the incoming. Yep, so the glasses are off now. Tries to get this cross up. Is not able to get there. Rambam trying to reestablish here. We gotta play slow, try and get as much life back as he can. Potentially get a hard kick after crouching the gun. Doesn't look for it though. Jam session, a Tatsu is able to counter call. And I think he hit foot dive there, because there was a chance he could have hit him. Super would have been hit. foot dive right there. Mm. Ooh, Stinger Reverb Shock, fireworks, million dollars in a row. Oh, but drop there. Yeah, it goes for the super a little bit too early. Able to run it back here, though. Dante's going to have trouble killing all of them within the time of his X-Factor, though. All right, guard break off the Acid Rain, it looked like, actually. And with Devil Trigger on, he's not going to gain any meter, but it doesn't really matter here. He's going to be able to secure the kill. He's still way behind, but Rambam has turned this from insurmountable to just about doable. Oh, this is doable. Kuma is very squishy. DP's coming. We're going to get next. That was a great use of the bold cancel to get out of there defensively. And every single one of these supers that gets put on block hurts so much here. Twice as much chip. Oh my god. Kills him off of it. Two to two. Living Legend still bringing this back. And that's really a lot of character knowledge there, knowing that you're going to get the chip out. Because if you don't get it, you get, you know, you get punished. We got no Chris on the screen, and Akuma said, I'll, I'll take up the mantle. It's time to eat lead. Ram Bam. Maybe starting to feel the pressure a little bit here for the reverse uh, the reverse 3-0 coming back from Living Legend. Hopefully it's not affecting him too much there. Almost gets to confirm off the jam session, but neutral continues. Pass is over. He's able to get Sogenmu set up. Ooh, and a potential unblockable. No, he throws him out of it. Living Legend and the X-Factors. The confidence here. He knows he has to kill Zero this time. He cannot let this character live. Yeah, if you're going to waste it on anybody, Zero is the character for sure. All right, so now it's just about weathering the storm here. Living Legend, every, the ball's in his court. What's he going to do with it? Oh, big time teleport for the mix-up. He's not going to be able to kill. What do we have for the mix-up, though? Goes for the meaty. A great late push block from Rambam. He's going to get punished off that. No, he does not. He still has teleports to keep himself safe. Ram Bam, nice. Since he was in the corner, makes that a very easy confirm. X-Factor back. He's gonna try and blow this game open. So X-Factor here to save the meter, I think is a good decision. Anything Ram Bam hits is one touch. He has two button techs in behind this, and Akuma in the backside as well. So it's looking good right here. The legend is gonna have to do it with Akuma alone, this time with no X-Factor. 
Tato on the way in. All right, trying to set himself up here. The fireball game begins. It's going to be a long 42 seconds, or maybe not the palm on the way down. Is it got enough? He drops it. No. That super maybe would have killed, so that's a huge drop, if, if only just to put him in chip range. He still has another chance. He has tons of meter to work with right now. Yeah, Ram Bam, you see, not calling jam session all he knows. Okay, can't confirm off this from that height. Nope, didn't even have this sis call ready. He gets another throw, but same situation, no confirm. Okay, trying to get the cross up, huge punish, checks his toes. Ram Bam, you have to finish this, and he does straight into million dollars. Rambam keeps his composure and makes it three to two in his favor. That dash back, crouch light, thousand IQ. That was a really tough situation. <laughs> Having the opponent be able to come back and keep it that close, Rambam, composure lord, holds it together. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Living Legend, obviously a great comeback performance there, but just oh, yeah. fell short. I think that super, that, that second super at the end could have made all the difference there if he was able to hit it. But Ram Bam, like you said, too smart, so good, so so consistent. You know, that's my favorite word to use to describe Ram Bam. Yeah, absolutely. Very consistent. But uh, yeah, once again, like I said before, Match Reno's on the bottom right corner. You can see we're already at $221.50. Thank you guys so much for that. I see you guys in the chat supporting channel as well. Appreciate you. Uh, we just had uh, we had our production guy just buy a Soul Calibur mouse pad. So, uh, you know, he put a, you know, from the, match, from the match arena. So uh, definitely put that in there as well. So, but up next, we're going to have Jason Kiddo versus EMP Obama. So Jason Kiddo, the Hagar God, you already know. But EMP Obama, an amazing Frank West player, but you probably know him better for his tournaments that he yes. runs. He runs the Marvel Discord. He runs hella tournaments for Marvel as well. Obviously a great member of the community. Uh, but today, it's not about that. Today, it's about him trying to open up a can of that you-know-what, you know? What, you know? <laughs> I was going to say, we'll have to see how it goes. This, uh, the most dangerous thing about the situations that Jason Kiddo puts into you is his, his team can function in whatever order, but regardless, it's incredibly front-loaded. When Hagar's on point, if he secures that first hit, if he gets it off of a pipe or just about anything, he can just run the whole team over in a 300% style. Absolutely. What you got to be scared about is the stalking flare, flame carpet setup. Yeah, and it's the same situation here since he got him off the hit with the with the lariat. Dark hole puts him not able to finish, but with the assist, it does not matter. On the reset, Jason Kiddo is able to save his meter, and Obama is going to go down Nova. That's just one of the strengths of uh, of Obama's team composition, though, is he can still level Frank on any touch. He has two buttons. Yeah, jam session, a million dollars are huge right there for Frank. All right, so if Frank gets any touch here, he's able to get chainsaws, but Jason Kiddo knows the situation, is playing it very safe. Just avoiding all the zombies here. Frank just chucking, chucking humans. It's <laughs> 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 going deep. Again, same situation though. Obama really trying to put it down, but the Lariat has stopped him at every single angle. Jason Kiddo's movement is looking ridiculous right now. He's not putting himself in bad situations. He's playing very, very safe. Yeah, for people who are unfamiliar with Marvel, Dormammu's not a fast character. Jason Kiddo is just quick. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely not a Magneto. Team Super is going to bet it all. Oh, and a raw tag into a Lariat, and it all oh. works out. Everything coming up Kiddo here. Here it is, Stalking Flare Flame Carpet Setup. I've seen this movie before. Oh, the double jump saved it. Oh, dash up Lariat. That's what I like to see there. <laughs> oh, no. And with that, Jason Kiddo is able to track it down and make it one to zero. Yeah, Jason Kiddo definitely a contender here to win Marvel at Frosty Fostings 13. All right. Kiddo jumps into the shield. Definitely one of the better decisions you can make. And that's really scary. Yeah, I was going to say, you, you can only do that if it's a block string. You know that he can just lariat out of that. Dolphin kick hits, but he, the hesitation, but Obama's still able to confirm it. 
He doesn't have second meter though, so it looks like we're gonna go TAC. Oh, and I've got the block by Kiddo right there. Kiddo looking strong. Ooh, just gut punches Frank. And just... What a recovery with the throw by Kiddo. Yeah, quite a few situations in a row. Kiddo is able to win them all in a row. Obama gets his feet back on the ground though, so he's able to fight. And he has two meters now, but no, it's not gonna matter. I was gonna say, when he has those two meter stock, any touch with Nova levels Frank all the way. Big time block, but Volcano is able to interrupt and he catches the jump loop off of that. I actually did not know you could do that. That's so cheap. Damn, Jesus. Team Super and Lariat, he sacrifices Hagar to kill Frank. Chaotic Flame. Oh, wow, that beat it. Oh, but the deep cross up. Three meters available. Kiddo is going to get it done. That Lariat call to kill Frank was 10 trillion IQ. It was so smart. He knew he was going to lose him. Not even didn't lose him, but hey, Obama's making a comeback now. Yeah, but no kill. Potentially he's going to come back to bite him here. You got to be careful for Vortex. Airplay trades, which is a big decision. Helmbreaker, Obama opening it up now. Reverb shock not going to happen. Cross up standing light. One more touch. He's going to build the third meter off of this. Oh, almost hit him with the meaty right there and he recovers. All right, finish it up. Keep it simple. No, he no. goes for a reset, maybe a drop and Kiddo is going to be able to answer back off of this. Oh, Obama had the whole game in his hands and unfortunately it's going to all unravel and Kiddo is going to go up two to zero. He had it. A really unfortunate, he knows what he wanted too. That's just an unfortunate drop. So now Obama is going to have to try and do the same thing that Legend was going for and get that reverse 3-0. And that is a great round start for him, but not afterwards. The pipe answers back. Oh no, the pipe giveth and the pipe taketh away, dude. But he gets his plink back, so he's still in it. Got both of them. Smart. No one's able to live. And he gets his hit, and he has his meter, so we're finally gonna get to see Frank online. This is Obama's chance here. Frank's kinda cheap at level four, bro. Gets his reset. All right, so he's gonna kill with one meter here, potentially zero. All right, so is the set play strong enough? Can Kiddo hold out? Uh, yes, no amount of set play <laughs> is going to beat Hagar if you let him touch the ground. <laughs> oh, no. So, dude, he spins like a helicopter. Okay, big drop, though. Good push block. There's a great push block, a late one. Yep. Oh, great reaction there by MP Obama, knowing that regardless of the DAC, he was going to win out there. So definitely the way to go. And the X-Factor timing is really smart there, knowing a hard knockdown was coming. Isn't able to kill, but that's okay. Still in a... Big time winning situation. All right, so Obama is certainly in a winning position here. Oh, and just everything comes up his, all the hits. And Frank is gonna be able to get to level five now. Optimize this. Oh man, look at this right here. Mag is gone, Hagar's coming in. Very low health. This is looking huge for Obama right now. Touched, you know the Lariat is coming though. It's definitely a factor. So much respect. The amount of respect that Obama showed down backing there is incredible. That uh, a lesser man jumps there every time. Yeah, I got scooped. It's me. I'm I'm, lesser I'm a lesser man. man. <laughs> I jump every time. Oh man, Obama, two to one now. But the okay, the open up. Kiddo, he, sm he, he smelled the defense there on Obama. Obama went for the block there on the plinks from Jason. So now he knows he's opting into that down back a little bit too much. Gets him with the SPD. And with that read, it's looking like a dead Nova right here. We got Stalking Flare, Flare Flame Carpet set up. No time for an interview, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> it's time. And the reset, oh no. And Frank doesn't really have anything to get out of that situation. Yeah, if you want to consistently get out, you definitely need a double jump or an air dash that goes up or down. I don't even think he can mash chainsaws on that, even when he has chainsaws. Uh, it might not work out. 
We have another situation here. Stalking Flare coming down. Oh, and this time Obama opts for the jump, and Kiddo is all ready for it. Potentially working on a perfect, unless he went for a Lariat. Oh, he definitely had a button out there with the Lariat, I think. Okay, here's a throw. Obama, got to make it happen. Five meters. Whatever we do, it's got to kill quick. That's optimal right there. There you go, okay. Four meters left. Big time block. Can't get two in a row, though. And on the scrambles, EMP Obama wins the day again. X-Factor just ran out. That's so huge for Jason Kiddo. Oh, yeah, and he tries to save himself with the devil trigger, but it's not going to work. Jason Kiddo, three to one, holds it down. A clean showing from EMP Obama, though. Finally got to see the Frank. In the set. And that's the difference maker with these Frank teams. Is if you get Frank leveled up, it's a whole different game. The rest of the data doesn't matter. Level 4 Frank changes everything so much. And EMP Obama has such good set play to run it down with that. Those chainsaws. So scary. So Kiddo is going to move on in the winner's bracket. And we are going to have our next match rolling yeah. up. Up next, we're going to be bringing Punk back against our favorite Spider-Man player from the Midwest, Little Monix. Oh, so Little Monix, a.k.a. Big, Big Monix. The homie <laughs> has been holding it down for quite a long time. Hoping to see uh, how he does against Punk here. I'm, uh, to my knowledge, they haven't played even in the brackets they've been in together. So it's going to be nice to see how these two uh, get heads up. And again, which team Punk plays. I think Wolverine might be the best choice. But uh, Magneto, obviously, never a bad one. I'm going to opt Magneto because you have to catch Spider-Man. Yeah, it's really hard to navigate against Spider-Man with just Wolverine. Because you don't have the... You don't have the neutral tools necessary with that character. You're always just trying to rush down. Like Southpaw said, it's definitely one of those things. You have to catch him. Yes. You have to catch him, and he's just throwing sticky stuff all over the screen. <laughs> that hits so, everywhere. Yeah. He just takes 19 air actions just doing this over and over again. You're like, what is happening? <laughs> Can we get like, down here? He's around four, I think. It's crazy. You can just stay up there all day. But what? for now, Punk is actually going to opt into the Wolverine. We'll see. I have to see how it goes, and that's another factor of Lil Monix's team that makes it very difficult. When Wolverine dies, Hawkeye does incredibly well against the rest of this show. So we'll have to see if that matchup ever comes up. But for now, Wolverine versus Spider-Man, Punk versus Lil Monix. Early representing the web throw. Early throw by Punk. That's does huge. He, does he get his assist? Not quite in time, and it calls in the wrong direction. So Lil Monix is able to get away and secure a hit. Get, it, get our loops going. Fortunate drop, but it leads into a pretty decent reset situation. But Punk managed to get straight out of it. The standing light takes him back to the corner. One meter spent is all it's going to take. Good blocks by Lomonix right there. Yep, so Dante manages to get away, uses million dollars. That's strictly just to clear the screen, slow Wolverine down just a little bit. Yeah, just trying to get Hawkeye in with the jam session. Can he get both? No, jam session interrupts any text board for the launcher. The awareness is on 10. Should be an easy finish. No, he misses. He's gonna chip him out. No, he raw tags out. Maybe an X-Factor. X-Factor might not be a bad decision. We'll have to see though. No, both players just gonna reset. And another nice push block there. And Lil Monix is able to confirm that. Wow. Ooh, TAC up. Definitely going to get the kill here now with Dante because this super is one of the most damaging supers in the game after scaling. All right, gets his tag back into Hawkeye. Meaty into the chip. You got Gimlet? Gimlet's certainly the right choice. A big time block. Oh, but he's able to get chipped out. And now Dante's going to have to do it alone. But as we've said before, this is certainly Punk's best character. Definitely the one he looks the most comfortable on. As we can see early, you don't push you don't push Dante buttons like that unless you know what you're doing. The confidence. You can't hesitate with eight frames, man. There we go. Gets him with the helm breaker. One mix up away. Acid rain. Ooh, and he went for the late cross up, but doesn't get the button and punishes the airplay with the helm breaker. You cannot do that in the Dante mirror, especially when he sped up with X Factor. That's an easy reaction there for Punk. You cannot test this guy's reactions. 
of all the things to test. Please not the reactions. That's going to be one to zero. Punk holding it down there in the Dante mirror at the end. Oh, look at the trade-off rips right there. And Lomon is coming out big with the Spider-Man. Same situation. Tech forward and opens it up. Million dollars. X-Factor here. Definitely the right call. Volcano Beehive going to build 10,000 meters. Is he going to be able to pick it up? No, he doesn't. Oh, no. Punk hands off the stick, though. It's going to be down Dante alone. And that's how it starts. Very nice on the Helmbreaker. Okay. Gonna try and kill without X Factor on the first character. I think that's the roadmap to victory for Punk right here. You gotta get rid of the first character without X Factor. And he's going to. That is amazing execution by Punk. That's good with the team super after that. Pops the X Factor early. Okay. Ends up same side. But now here's the issue. Catching spot. Never mind. Caught him. Uh, doesn't even let me give time to tell the problem. But he dropped it. Little Monix did afterwards. And he regains his composure and gets the hit. And that was quite the confirm there with the two web swings. Little Monix adjusting for position so well. Uh-oh. Definitely did not mean that. Or maybe that was a bait. Oh, not the type of bait that we want to see if it was. Yeah, Punk with a solid chance here to make this comeback. If he's able to kill Hawkeye here, incoming on Spider-Man with low health, really a good chance here. In fact, I would say, if anything, after this level three, he has the advantage. What's he got? Acid Rain. Dashes back under, standing medium. Can we finish? There we go. As soon as you see the Killer B, you know he's got it. And I love it. You kept it simple. Killer B, Reverb Shock, game. That's game two for Punk right there. All right, so Punk trying to make it a 3-0 here. Lil Monix getting a little bit of a mental reset, though, and he's, oh, and by mental reset, I mean, Spidey may bit, cry. a little bit of Virgil here. All right, so let's see if the Virgil switch can make it happen. Good blocks early. Lil Monix sets himself up for success. But the defense for Punk, again, we highlighted it before. He confirms the jam session from full screen. That was a godlike. And then the ultimate spider reset. He And he still gets him. Yeah, no invulnerability there. Yeah, if he was able to DAC maybe a little bit faster, he definitely would have got out of that situation. But he definitely had the right read. Same situation. TAC, Dante just going to knock him down. Going for the infinite. OK, a little Monix with the confidence. No, not quite able to finish. All right, so Punk got to play the Doom on point here for a little bit. Alpha counter in for Lil Monix. Gets himself set up. It's actually a good Alpha counter just to get Spider-Man in pretty safely. Yeah, one meter certainly better than two. And again, snipes him out of another situation with the web throw. Just catching him in movement so many times with that. Spider-Man with his movement is so shifty. It's hard to tell sometimes when he's going to come up and grab you or you get thrown. All right. Punk has already done it once with Dante alone. Can he do it twice? Maybe not with this start. X-Factor is available. He's just going to bring Dante in. And that should be it. A very simple finish here. And then beam, beam, beam. Doesn't even go for it. Just Volcano Beehive million dollars. Lil Monix on the board. It's good. We need, he needed it. That's a huge game. We're 2-1. Is that really all you got? All right, so Lil Monix, the start of a comeback potentially. With the Virgil, maybe just the confidence of knowing you have the second brother behind you was enough because Virgil really didn't fight much that, uh, that game. More just Spider-Man getting the work in. It's that possible X-Factor level three dark Virgil that we all know and love. Yeah. Okay, another nice set of blocks there and a great delayed push block to get himself out of trouble. Same from Punk though. Did you see that movement in neutral by Lil Monix to get out of that situation? Okay, catches him. On the dash and the another overhead. So Dante should die off this situation. Lomax is going to be able to, no, he doesn't. I said he was going to be able to build that second meter, but Punk is going to be able to fight here. Hysterics seems to be his answer. Yeah, and had to burn the meter because Jetstream was definitely not what he was looking for. Yeah, we're seeing an uncharacteristic number of missed inputs here from Little Monix. 
so far, but Momonix is able to dash out of the situation again. Punk just leaning on that Stinger, just waiting to see if he can catch him in movement, catch him in neutral one time. I definitely like what Lil Monix has done here. He's transitioned to a type of like, you know, lane neutral. I'm gonna sit back here. I'm gonna make him kind of come to me and make him overextend himself. Yeah, forcing a lot of these situations just through things like that. He reacts to that and is able to get the hit. Devil Trigger and he can pick it up with Volcano? No, he's gonna do it all with Spider-Man. Big time cross up into the throw. Doom potentially just gonna die for this TAC though from Lil Monix. Greedy, greedy. I think he had to. He was running out of X-Factor at the last second. Oh, and a perfect play of that. The Alpha Counter into Rapid Slash sees the beam, goes straight into Swords. Wow, Lil Monix. A big teleport, X Factor. That's huge for Punk if he can get rid of Virgil right here. That's enough. Yeah, everything coming up Punk now. He's got half a meter, and Dive Kick just hits, gets him out of the double jump. Time's still not a factor. Punk actually opts not to spend the meter and does not get the kill. But the chip right here, we get an alpha counter, he does. I don't know if that was worth it with the Spear Flame. It might kill, and it does. Yep, so Dante. Hammer does not hit. Reverb Shock puts him in block stun. Vortex is a great decision, but what else can we get off of it? Oh. Nothing. Punk has the answers on the air to air. That's Wolverine, no less, at the super jump height, and that's going to be three to one. Absolutely. I do like that last dish effort with that Tiger Knee Vortex. It had the opportunity. The potential was there for mm -hmm. sure. But Punk looking too solid. Yeah, Punk, honestly, you know, he's been getting better every week that he's been participating in the Parsec tournaments. And this is, uh, this is not a surprise. He did nope. beat Milky last week. Milky, obviously, the 2020 Marvel champion. So, uh, I mean, without a surprise there, you know, it's, we can see Punk go very far in this bracket. He's going to be playing Flocker, though, to try to qualify for top 16 winners. So we're mm. definitely going to have to put that on the stream a little later. But for now, we're going to be starting off here. We got Choco versus Escalante. Oh. Choco is a strong, uh, strong Nova player from Canada. So, and of course, you guys know about Escalante, obviously the Mag Morgan. Escalante putting in a ton of work and chokehold, another one of the Canadian. And he's playing a very familiar team, playing a shell very similar to that of Mr. Coach Steve himself. Chokehold, a very capable pilot though, has been doing incredibly well. Gonna have to see how he deals with the Morgan though. It's gonna be very difficult. There definitely is like a Coach Steve strategy with Spencer. You just kind of sit up there and just zip yeah. back and forth, waste Morgan's timeout, and so then approach afterwards. And that's one of the nice things about this team shell is you can see people's like personality and playstyle very much expressed in the way that they use the Nova. So we'll have to see though. Chokehold is gonna have to get it done. And the interesting thing here also is what is Escalante gonna start? It looks like Magneto, and I think that's a good decision. He definitely likes to gain the meter. Oh, it's oh, gonna be more again. at the end. Okay. And this does make sense. This is Nova's hardest matchup. This is everyone's hardest matchup. Standing light, puts him down. Choco definitely uh, definitely had a tough bracket so far. He's already coming off a win against Joey D and Angel Bags. Oh, okay, two big wins. Yeah, two players who consistently top eight our normal events. So. All right, but Escalante is able to get first blood. Gets himself set up, and Choco unfortunately catches one fireball, and one is never just one when Morgan's, Morgan's got the super on. That was a really good like move right there. Low profile beam and have a light ready for Choco when Spencer got to Morgan. Oh, but Choco is able to open it up. Should be able to kill Morgan off this touch. No, a big time drop. Has to block there. And that situation definitely comes up in Escalante's favor on the reset, especially with Spencer dying. Ooh, this is looking really bad for Chokehold right here. Escalante is in the driver's seat. Yep, three meters still, so plenty of Astro Vision to go. It's just reestablishing yourself to be able to set it up is the only issue here for Escalante. Now that the fireball is hit, there's no more issue. This one's a wrap, one to zero. Gonna have to win the point war to be able to set those situations up. 
I mean, Escalante has clean buttons right now. He's pressing the right thing. Good DP at the start as well. Yeah, I mean, 99 seconds is Nova's best shot to track her down, but if she can just open up with that DP, he has to make a hard read and then another read afterwards on if she's going to go for Shell Kick. And Nova's already gone off two touches. Got the arm, he's gonna hit Magneto for that. Got it's both of them! Both, all right, and there's no fireballs coming. So it should be a very easy finish. Gets his grapple, zip, zip. Nah, just one, punch him. Okay, Doom almost able to reestablish. Escalante with a great block and a great timing on the X-Factor. But Chokehold still in the driver's seat, even with the drop. He had it. Yep, so he gets himself established with some space. Good aim on the way down, but you know, the foot dive is just weak. Oh no, and this has just gotten a lot harder here. One incoming is going to decide everything. Escalante, cross oh. up medium from so far. And just one more rep into level three. And Escalante makes it two to zero on quite he, the comeback with the Doom. He might be alive. Oh no. He had to do that, and he hits! No, Chuckle! He doesn't pick it up. Photon Array, he overcommits and dashes forward. Escalante turns it two to zero there. That was Chuckle's game at the end. It really was in quite a few situations. All right, Escalante is able to get Astral Vision set up. Off the alpha counter from Chokehold, potentially an accident here. Taking half of Doom's life there. I think he did okay. You know, he does, Ascalante does not have another Astral Vision ready. Yep, and he manages to avoid the missiles. This is a good situation here. Humor Rocket Punch just to hit Doom. Now it's all about when he can call his own beam after this Astral Vision, but he might not even get the chance. Oh, that hurts so bad right there for Choco. Gets the raw tag. Almost got punished, though. Yeah, all that off a full screen fireball in neutral as well. Morgan really holding it down when she has this Astral Vision set up, and the chip might just do it. Raw tag is really tough. And the whole team bleeding now. All the characters at once. Spencer going to die. Doom comes in. Yeah, just a you, couple fireballs away. You can't do those raw tags against Morgan. You're going to get cleaned up every time. It's unfortunate right there. And Escalante is taking full advantage of this match right now. Oh, and that will do it. Escalante, 3 to 0. It's going to be able to put it down. Man, that was incredibly good. Unfortunately, a couple of the raw tags there from Chokehold in the final game. And a lot of that came off of, unfortunately, what I would I would assume to be an accidental alpha counter. The alpha counter really early in the match, almost on the first hit into Doom. Not usually something you see, so unfortunate to see it to happen on that, but great execution from Escalante to hold it down and capitalize on the error. Alrighty, so Escalante is actually gonna qualify for winner's top 16 after that match. Um, but up next, we're going to be bringing on Mundank. Mundank here, obviously one of the goats of Parsec Marvel. Uh, he's going to be going up against DJ Vest. Ooh, okay. Yeah, DJ Vest, not a name you see quite often in the brackets, but an amazing player nonetheless. Obviously one of my Hagar brothers, so, you know, I got to show mad love for him. So, but yeah, he's going to be trying to do his best to beat on one of the kings of Parsec Marvel, Mundank. Yeah, we'll have to see, and I mean... This is the kind of action we can only get here, man. Frosty Fausting 13. It has been so much fun so far. I've been having a blast. I hope you guys in the chat are as well. I know everybody here just been doing our things, man. It's so nice to see. Finally getting into this. So these two getting their button checks done, getting to the main menu, and it's time to rock. Mundank. It's going to be interesting to see how he deals with the point matchup, right? Because obviously Nova on point playing that... Uh, that anchor Magneto stuff that we've seen from him for so long. That's the 2020 meta, but now we're in 2021. So we're going to see it some more. And you know, our, one of our favorite characters, Super Scroll. We love to see it. I'm pretty sure he's going he's gonna to switch into the Hagar here. Yes, Good he call, is. Tom. 
Ooh, Nova with the dolphin kick early on right there. And brave stuff against Hacker. Just Absolutely. be able to throw that out. Yeah, Mundank has a lot of experience against Hagar, so plays a lot against Jason Kiddo. So this is definitely not a matchup he's afraid of. And that's one of the greatest strengths of Mundank's team against a lot of these other compositions. If you have a slow startup assist meant to control space, Disruptor Assist generally has an incredibly good matchup against it. In a lot of situations, you can just call EM Disruptor and accidentally interrupt drones in, in the hardest situations. Make it so hard for DJ Vest to activate and get across the screen. So here we go for the incoming mix-up. Gets a shield set up big time cross up and keeps him in the corner. And he's gonna X for Sentinel. That was dirty. Okay, so we're not scared of the Super Skull. Sentinel is an issue because he got drones sitting on there. And he almost has enough of just that meter. Magneto's gonna clean up. And he has to take an incoming is the important thing here. And off the throw, three meters available Monday. Let's see what we can get from it. All right, well, it's heavily scaled right here, and he's just going to go for the damage. We got. Listen, we still got Spencer. We still got extensions. This we still got a lot on the table this here. Gonna Half kill. a meter. This is going to kill. All right, gets one. Not Has the Nova extension. <laughs> no, he can't use the Nova assist but he manages to grapple backwards to stay away from the X-Factor cancel from DJ Vest and Mundank makes it one to zero. This time oh, he starts the wow. scroll and what a reset gets behind him, Mundank. Holding it down. Bro, that movement was really Yeah, he got schmixed, he got schmixed. This is it. And then off the pickup, Super Scroll should die. It's gonna be Sentinel coming in. Are we gonna see Hard Drive though? No, doesn't even try for it. Or potentially got crossed up on his input if he did. That looks crossed up last second. And I think this X Factor is another great decision here. Spending the X Factor here with Hagar left, you can certainly run this out. But he's not even gonna need to, just gets him on the incoming. It's kind of disrespectful against Hagar. You know the Lariat's there, and he has X Factor on top of it. Oh, and you the TAC? reset? TAC reset. All right, Mundek is feeling himself, and I'm feeling it. He's gonna have to make it two to one, two to zero, rather. The X Factor not even spent. You Perfect. hate to see him. You hate to see him die with the X Factor not spent. Close. Wow. Mundek is playing very aggro right now, aggressive, but his decision making is crisp. He knows exactly what he's doing every second of the game. Well, if I had to highlight Mundek in one word, I think everyone would agree. Speed, the yeah. movement, the decision making, it's all about the pace. He outpaces you and that's how he beats you for sure. Gets that shield set up. Same situation there with the dolphin kick and he spaces himself very well. That might have been safe from Lariat from the spacing he chose. Really nice to see from Mundank. Oh, we got a block here, so let's see if Vest can get on the board. Oh, Sentinel just took that arm. That's looking terrible for Sentinel. Touches the assist, but DJ Vest has got a good opportunity now. See if he can track him down the movement. Looking good. Oh, but a pipe. All right, DJ Vest is in this. Finally, we're going to get to see some offense here. What can we get? He has to kill Spencer. Okay. Very nice. And I like his use of that assist too, since he doesn't use, uh, he's not going to use his wall bounce to zone combos. Be able to get the extensions with the throw from Monday. He recognizes that's not a real mix up. He can't fly that close. So Sentinel flying a little too close to the sun. The tin can is going to die. Hagar? He's just going to throw up shields and javelin. Run. That's all. He's not even have to deal with it. All right. Keeps himself safe there again with the dash away. Ooh. Ouch, M catches Super Scrolls V and Monday X Factors. And this looks like it's going to be it. Yeah, DJ Vest with a good showing of offense in the second game, but unfortunately, Monday is able to close it out. That is going to be a 3 to 0 there. Monday? That was amazing. Yeah, another, another showing of pretty serious stuff there. It's Bro, really able to hold it down. World class movement, man. It really, really is, of all the things. But thank you again so much, guys, to everybody still here for Frosty Faustings 13. Still holding it down. Fight. 
All right, and we're getting the next two players on. Have to see who we get through. I'm excited to see who we got. Yeah, I mean, just getting to see Monday and then the next thing right afterwards. To figure out what we get going through next. All right, so who have we got coming up next here? I'll have to see on the bracket when we get them coming through. I go for the dash up already? There we go. All right, welcome back, sir. All right, so we're gonna have uh, Crazy Joe versus DXP coming up. Okay, all right. It's gonna be a pretty exciting match here, and the winner of this will qualify for top 16. Yeah, the button check already through, already getting straight into the match. So Crazy Joe versus DXP coming straight up. Okay, good block there and a good low profile on the Viper laser. You know what DXP definitely likes to do? He likes to put you in block stun, missiles, all that. But Viper can blow up all that. Yeah, that's the big thing. As long as she's got meter on deck, she can make it happen. But DXP doesn't want you to play. That's the purpose of this team here. All right, isn't quite able to pick that up with the heavy on the way down. Layered mix-ups. DXP takes first blood here. Ooh, manages to get to the, the opposite side, but goes with a second cross-up. Oh, but a little bit of a drop, and now neutral resets. No, it doesn't. Helmbreaker catches them both, and that might just be the end of the game. Rider's really little, and he's done. Yeah, so one to zero. A quick one from DX. And that's kind of the nature of the game with DXP's playstyle. He's fast and furious. This team will blow you up real fast or really he'll does. chip you for a while. All right, so one to zero, DXP. Let's see if Crazy Joe can get an answer here. The optic blast not gonna work out. So DXP is gonna get the first hit again. Here I am. See if we can work the loops. What's gonna be the reset is the question here. Launch teleport? Oh no, we're going. This one with the deep round trip, EX. The blocks. Patience from DXP, so smart. And then he's able to spend the meter off the high time, so there we go. Good blocks by Joe there. But this is the game plan of DXP, that's what he wants to do to you right there. Sword, uh, sword glitch, and just keep doing it. Yep, so gets him there. And Doom is able to hold it down. Spends those, gets a little bit of extra meter off of that. Gets the beam into Spear Flame. A, <laughs> such a nice extension. I love that extension. Fantastic. There we go, round trip coming. And round trip is just visual noise. The Vajra is what you need to watch out for. And that's one of the hardest parts about this team. On that incoming, when he lets go of that round trip, you know that that is certainly a threat, but you don't know if it's actually what he's working on, what the mix-up, what the crux of the mix-up is. Absolutely. Ooh, good the EX Seismo right there, but it doesn't convert. Joe one needs to get on the board. Yeah, he's getting close. There we go. This is a big start. Crazy Joe goes for a reset. DXP just immediately holding tag to get out of the situation. Breaks out. I mean, this is a better situation right now for Crazy Joe. Doom is in, but then gets hit by the Vajra. Oh, no. All right. So it should be. It's just, it's really about, oh, no, I was going to say, it's really about how much meter he spends to kill, but Crazy Joe gets out unscathed. On the raw tag. Still DXP's turn with the round trip coming. Yeah, and he gets that big cross up with the beam. Resets. Oh, you knew it was coming because he was scaling earlier. And Joe's going to lose Dante. Yeah, and that's the hardest part of that mix-up. When he goes for that foot dive, you know if he hits the wall, it's going to be a cross-up. But he could have flown beforehand. And crazy Joe with a crazy block. Holy moly. Got them both. Oh. DXP is going to take this. Yeah, DXP is able to hold it down. Spends the two meters quickly. 
there it is, three to zero, and that's one of the tough situations. Not only as a Viper player, but with the playstyle again of DXP, it can be over in a heartbeat. Both these teams just pedal to the metal at all times. DXP able to hold it down. Looked very good there. Yeah, the XP is so strong. Playing from the West Coast, too, so yes. it always amazes me how great he does in our brackets. Obviously, like I said, the connection and the latency is a little bit further for the West Coast guys, but the XP does not care. He doesn't care about your connection. He doesn't care about your characters. He don't care about you. <laughs> <laughs> he, he out here trying to win Frosty Fossil 13 right now. Oh, man. He might care about you. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, maybe. I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> Thank you very much, though. If anybody cares about y'all, it's us. Thank you so much here for tuning in. Frosty Pass is 13. It's been a... I just can't say it enough. I feel like a broken record. There's too much good Marvel in a row with the, uh, just every week. And then especially this week, holding it down with Frosty Fousting's coming through. All these tournaments going on all weekend. Yeah, it's been a very exciting, very exciting evening already. And we are, we're not even close to done, guys. So I appreciate you guys sticking with us. Like I said, after this match, we are going to be bringing on top 16 and obviously top eight. We're going to finish it all tonight. We got, we got a big evening ahead, but appreciate all of your support, all of the love you guys have been showing on our channel there and in the match arena. Shout out to Frosty Faustings 13. This is going to be a great evening. All right, and it looks like if the names are right, this is going to be Punk versus Flocker. Is this to qualify for top 16 here? It is to qualify for top 16. Oh, man. All right. So Punk going up against one of the toughest opponents here in the bracket in Flocker. Almost gets the conversion off the jam session early. You know, I don't want to overextend, but I feel like they play almost a similar type of marble. Very calculated. Oh, Green Buster interrupts the mix-up. Punk Wolverine already halfway dead. And he should be able to finish here. Yeah, he does. And he's not even going to need a meter. So Flocker setting himself up well. Catches him on the dash out. So that's going to take care of the meaty. See how your loops are, homie. You know the deal. Yeah, we got a, a, a loop checkpoint for sure. I mean, it's he good. looked really clean the first time he was on stream. Yeah, and Flocker is in there right now. Dante's going to have to fight it out, though. So can move, mix, more buttons. That's a good push block timing to prevent the unblockable situation. Not a true, uh, not a truly inescapable unblockable there. No, that was really good by Punk. He got out of that situation the best way he knew how. Blocking. Okay, hits him with million dollars. All right, so Punk. Can he make it happen? Acid Rain. Helmbreaker. That's a hit sphere, baby. Oh, wow. But amazing. <laughs> One to zero. Foolishness, Dante. Foolishness. Foolishness. Bro, Virgil will be calling out his brother like that. All right. So going into game two. All right. The dive kick puts him down. And TAC not broken. Punk. A big opportunity to come out of this with five meters and a dead zero. That's what you like to see. Absolutely. Keep it simple right here. Go to level three. Smart stuff by Punk. I like that more. Obviously, he can do the infinite all the way to the five meters, but as soon as you have it, just spend it. Yeah, because you have an X Factor here to kill Virgil. Yeah, and that's what we're going to see. X is off the dive kick. Assist to pick up. There you go. Enough. And it is just close. He had DP extension as well, too, if it didn't. Blocker, no uh, no stranger to the comeback, though. The stand medium, that's what we're going to have to look out for. Yeah, and he might wish that he had that X Factor again because this is a tough matchup now. Oh, God, Blocker. Yeah, the pressure was too strong there. Punk had to give. All right, so one mix-up away. X-Factor is gone, thankfully, but still a really tough road for Punk here. Yeah, Flocker definitely known as one of the best Hawkeye players to have ever played. Obviously up there with Yule Kevin and you know, a couple other great, great players, but Punk is making work, light work of Flocker here. And that kills. Yeah. I was gonna say, I think Dash up, uh, he still get. I think he actually gets the meter potentially on the OTG too, but 
Doesn't even need to find out. One to one. Yeah, Punk able to tie, tie it up here, saying that he's not a Punk. He's Punk, but he's not a Punk. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Blocker with the first hit here. Should be able to, the way his loops have been going today, should be able to finish it. Definitely looking good. Three meters. Spends one. And there you go. Blocker nice. holds it down. See incoming, we're gonna go meaty on Doom. Yes, we are. Punk tries to escape. The air dash is not enough though. And actually, Blocker dashes the incorrect way to pick that up. So Punk gets a second lease on life here with the Doom. See if he tries to fight it out as Doom or if he tries to spend that meter and get Dante in. I think both are pretty good decisions. I mean, I like the way he's playing it. He's trying to bait the Buster out. And you can approach after that, but then once you see orange again, it's like you gotta kinda hang out. So not, for, not to forget that he also has two button tech behind him as well. The million dollars, one of the best supers to have as the second character for Team Super. The only issue with that is when do you see zero on the ground when an assist is called? Very, very true. Spends that meter, now's the time for Dante. He's gonna spend million dollars to hit. Virgil, X Factors, and sh okay, Killer B hits. We've got an opportunity. Punk has to snowball this. Blocker cannot lose Virgil here, and that's a good X Factor. It's take back the momentum right here. Yep, and he has level four on deck now. So if Doom gets hit by anything, he is absolutely gone. No, he's gonna go swords. Okay, same situation though. Doom can't afford to give away a hit here. Towards any teleports up, does hit. Not able to finish though. Chip is a factor. Oh, in the low. I think he faked a throw. I think Punk thought throw, and that's why he stood up. I think that's why he was going for the contest. Either way though, Flocker makes it work. It's two to one now. And he gets the opening hit. Just so clean. Honestly, a little lucky from Punk that uh, Flocker wasn't able to get all the way over to get the happy birthday. That was very close. Very close. That would have been huge for Punk right now because Blocker is running with momentum. All right, and there you are. So now Flocker, same situation. Punk goes for the upward dash that time again. What time's the Hawkeye? Oh, Jam Session saves and Punk recovers that. Amazing. And he's gonna spend the X Factor just to make a thousand percent sure he can finish. I think that's absolutely the right decision. Even if you can do that meter list, uh, if you can make it easier and guarantee it, that's what you've got to do here. We've got to make a comeback. Up with the clean movement, cross up. One touch. If Hawkeye gets away though, good block, block right there. Might be able to land a throw. Yep. Yeah, standing medium. Chicken guard, man. All right, can Dante do it against almost full X Factor, Hawkeye? It's gonna be hard. Oh, no, definitely not now. <laughs> it's gonna look a little tough. Gets that OTG. He has level three on deck. We're calling in Ant Man, and Flocker punches his ticket and moves on three to one.